Do you want to go and do the left and the right? Okay. Do the left and the right. Yep, that's fine. How's that for your eyes? Can you see all right? Just hit go live, so. Right, that's what I was worried about. Yeah. I should be on. Yep, starting. Hey guys, <laughs> uh, we allowed ourselves five hours to set up and we are sorry that we are still late and that Peter is still putting his microphone on. <laughs> but um, hey, welcome to our live stream, our live workshop. We've got beautiful Rara here with us if she comes in. We've got another model, Domini, she's from the Czech Republic. She'll be here in about half an hour, oh, 20 minutes now. Uh, Clearly we're not practicing social distancing. <laughs> we are giving you guys a live workshop because everyone should be practicing social distancing and we hope you are all safe, healthy and above all remaining positive because I think that's what everyone needs in this time is to be a little bit happy and not worry too much. Um, uh. Just checking that. So People did you announce here. our new camera operator since you got the sack? Oh, and we've got Kiki here who's operating a camera, but yeah. I don't think I can... Working. Is my sound working? Let me check. If I turn my checker on. Your checker on? Yeah, our sound is working. Yeah. Yeah. We're shooting from all angles. So now I'm... <laughs> now I'm a little, a little We're bit thrown off. Um, but yeah, we unfortunately had to postpone all of our Europe workshops because of the state of the world at the moment. Uh, they will still be going ahead. We're just not too sure when. We do have to wait and see you know, what's kind of happening when we can travel. And this is our creative idea for how we can still keep up with you guys and shoot you guys lightings and stuff. And if you guys want more in-depth stuff, we do obviously have Inspire. We've got heaps of new content going up on that because we're all in lockdown. We've got no work. Yeah, uh. so all of our work's <laughs> been cancelled for like the next four months. It's kind of crazy, a very strange time we're living in. But yeah, we hope you it's enjoy time this. To get creative. It is time to get creative. It's it means I can get back to creative. I've got, oh, I've got time to write music again. This is awesome. <laughs> So if you guys have any questions while we are doing this, please leave them in the chat box. I still haven't figured out what side of the screen it's on, but leave them there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's on somewhere. I will be flicking cameras, asking questions, and... Aren't you answering questions? I'm just checking what people are saying. Maybe I should check this a bit. So have you actually told people what we're going to do in between question times? Yeah, we're I just did. I said we're showing them a like, kind of workshop, like a lighting tutorial workshop. That's right, I'm just making sure you do your job. No, What's with the Egyptian movement? I don't know, who knows? Uh, people are just saying hello. Uh, people are on complete lockdown for another two weeks. And people are here to see the lighting set up. What are we shooting? I don't know, I've asked Peter this like countless times today and he won't tell me. He likes having his little secrets. No, it's not a secret. I didn't know. I will not say I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one. Oh, you got, I... What? What do you want me to get you? No, it's all right. I'll get my own. Oh, I can go get it for no, you. Right. I've got to it's say not hi. An assistant. I've got to say hi. I'll just wait. I've gone over Kiki. Oh, my God. We're going to cause death. Peter. Peter, Peter, Peter. All right. So, let's... let's we're not going to be professional. So, if anybody wants to see something professional, you've come to the wrong channel. <laughs> uh, we... Oh, what am I doing? It's over that way. Um, I can't see you at the moment. We're Peter. just... You're going <laughs> to... Over the next couple of months, Beck and I are going to do the most craziest oh, things my fine. live. <laughs> we're going to do a cooking show, aren't we? Yes, yeah, so we're going to make chopped cheese. And we're going to do cocktail making. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we'll find other stuff. I'll we'll do, do some <laughs> live retouching. And yeah, we'll just do lots of stuff. We need to keep ourselves amused and Somehow. we want to keep you amused as well. So it's killing two birds at one stone. Yeah, an art nude class. Not after last time when you streaked behind the camera. Do you know how many people keep putting up that exact second where they couldn't see anything anyway? She yeah. had tape on your boobs. <laughs> anyway, um, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to play with some lights. You're trying to see me. Yeah. Oh, isn't Kiki doing a good enough job? Oh, no, I just, I didn't know that she was, oh, hers was ready yet. Your bottle of wine was blocking <laughs> you from pressing your buttons. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. There we go, okay. Kiki's on now, so Kiki. Yep. 
we have our own unique virus in the studio. It's called Beckwine virus. No, she didn't comment. Huh? Sorry. Oh, so, sorry, Rara, I was still continuing. It's all right. I did a daddy joke, but you oh, your, oh, your Beckwine disease. Beckwine disease, yeah. It's so funny. Cracks me up. So, back on what I was saying before, I'm just going to start playing with light. And we've got two different models for me to play with. And I'm just going to use all different modifiers and keep doing stuff till I get a really pretty picture. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> if I can't get a pretty picture, it's the model's fault, not mine. <laughs> 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 Hey, Peter, what's the best mirrorless camera? The best mirrorless camera? Yeah. Uh, the camera you're more comfortable with, but I'm not, I'm not completely happy that Canon and Nikon have got their act together at the moment. I love Sony myself. I think Fuji's got a really good rap. Um, seen lots of people say good stuff about, especially the video side of some of the um, Panasonics. But my personal thing, I, I really like the Sony. And not that I've played with the Fujis, but there's a lot of people that give it a good rap. So there, where I'm sitting at the moment, give Canon and Nikon another two years to catch up. And hopefully they'll be putting out some stuff that is commercially usable. Because Sony and Panas, uh, not Panas, and Sony and, um, what's it called? Uh, Fuji, I think have very good packages out now. Uh, the Hasselblad mirrorless is actually it's actually really good as long as you treat it that it is a medium format camera and don't expect to do sport shooting and that type of stuff with it. So I'm just quickly sort of stands up too big for in here, so I'm just shortening it down. Cool. I'm going to start off shooting with a bare bulb. I got you this. Is that enough? Well, Seven. you give me a cup of water. No, it's uh, seven. There's ice. Yeah, it's got ice in it, it's in there. It's iceless. I'm gonna put more ice in it for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just being a sock. It's <laughs> Don't tell Beck. Uh, I'll swing it that way, it'll give me more ice better. So yeah, we'll get our ice in the gear in a minute. But we're gonna start off lighting with the bare bulb. And most people are petrified of bare bulbs or harsh light. So we're going to try and do a nice shot with a bare bulb. Do I put a wall on you or not? Hmm. Hmm, maybe not. If I sit it from high, the shadow's going to drop. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. Now let's see if my camera is tethered. Thank you. No, it's over. Oh. No, it's on Kiki at the moment. <laughs> 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 okay. I see you guys too. <laughs> All right, let's All right. see. Um. <laughs> that wasn't typical. The man works, the woman drinks. <laughs> I Can drink. you get my focus up? Because yeah, sure. I it's already see. Up. Yeah, but I'm oh. not seeing it tethered. Uh, register. Oh, register. All right, yep. you need to hit register. There we go. Sorry, I just unplugged, which is mostly Sorry. going to do... More damage, what, 100 ISO, you got your 160 up. F8. Cool. So, and so yeah, I've got Peter tethered in to I'll the take laptop a shot. that I'm on, I'll so take a he shot can, and see if that works. can flick it for you guys. Did that pop up? Yeah, it did pop up. Um, yeah, we might get you in. There we go. This way a little bit. Coming, line yourself up with me in the light. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, that lens should do. So what I've just got a bare bulb pro photo, and this uh, this is me starting. I'll most I'll be overexposed. Oh, it's black and white. I need to fix these things. I should have had that turned off. Click to that. Do you want me to? I want to be able to adjust it. Okay, let me find out. So you've had six hours to learn this and you still haven't got it. I do. I think I know what to do. So I just go here and minimize the 
by minimum. You sure you know what you're doing? Yeah. Positive? Totally. There we go. And That's cool. I just need to get to some of my settings. Yeah. There you go. But you can't get to any of yours now. Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. So let's turn on my highlight alert and let's turn on our picture and let's turn off our grayscale. Oh, oh right, nice colour balance. Here we go. Now people can see what they're doing. All right, so here's my first frame. You'll see it's overexposed. I am going to quickly color balance if I can get to my color balance. Oh. Sorry about that really messy yes, switchover, really. guys. Have you done a messy switchover? I did. I pushed the wrong button. Oh. There we go. Color balance away. Come on. What's happening? Am I on this program? You should be. Is it not working? My color balance tool is not. There we go. So that worked. See how purple it is, or is that just me? Mm, it does look pretty purple. Well, when I clicked color balance tool, it did nothing. Uh, I've got something weird turned on. Let's turn on. Cursor's turned on. Looks really weird. I wonder if it's just the. Oh, it might be the constants. Although oh. it wasn't weird before. Oh. I know, so it's black and white. <laughs> Is this Let why you shoot in black and white? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I can't get the colour right. Um, let's take another picture and see what happens. <laughs> Do you want to jump in there for a second? Yeah, because it's very purple. Quick question. Do you edit your uh, the same way for colour photos as you do for black and white? Uh, I can be a little bit heavier on my black and white photos. Uh, mainly because uh, things like dodge and burn um, can do a lot of damage when you're shooting, um, when you're in colour, when you dodge and burn too heavy. Uh, the dodging will desaturate and the burning will oversaturate. So I have to be a little bit more careful. Oh, that's fully cooked. Oh, wrong way again. I keep flicking the wrong arrow. This is weird. What uh, kind of boom stand are you using? You know that answer. Oh, so boom, boom for my thing. It's just a Manfrotto Mega Boom, and we've put extended legs on it. So the, the footprint on the ground's a bit wider on the ground. I think, I don't know for some reason why this is not colour balancing to that, but it's colour balancing perfect off the card. That but looks a bit more. It's a bit more. We'll just work with that. It's going to be black and white in a minute. So <laughs> anyway. I've just Typical. turned down the light a little bit. I'm just going to get my exposure right. Um, but yeah, it's when I'm working with uh, black and white, I can be so much more heavy with dodge and burn because I'm not going to affect my saturation and things like that. Cool. So you'll see that we've just got their highlight alert just going off on her lip. I've got my exposure right now. I need to make this a photo. Now at the moment, most camera club type people hate that shadow under her chin. Um, most fashion people love that shadow. We're going to make this an edgy fashion portrait. So I'm actually going to increase that shadow and I'm going to throw it off center a little bit. So can you just take a step this way? Cool. So at the moment, I'm setting up for a fashion portrait and you'll see it start to come together. You'll notice that we've now, you see that shadow sh shifted off center? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm just going to bring this light further off center. So the further I come off center to Ra Ra, the more that shadow is going to go off center across her face. Cool. That's really cool. And I lost some power because I have taken the fair way. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that nice line down oh, there. Right. You mess it up. I'm just going to rotate there the power of the light. 
So me turning this light's only changing the power, it's not changing the direction. So I'm turning this light so more power hits rah rah, and you'll notice that the shadow will still be following from the same direction. Did that work? Yep. So I still need to put a bit more power. I've lost a little bit more of the uh, uh, brightness moving it back here. 54, 58, bring that in. That's getting closer. I'm just checking her nose. Only this area here is what I'm looking for because that's going to show me the overexposure. So I can give the, her just a touch more power onto this. I might keep you jumping on the other side of me, please. I oh, don't want me leaning over you. It's easier for me to show. Yeah, I just, if I move my, I've got a little bit of room now. Cool, so I've got a, just about half a stop. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. I want to be about a third of a stop off going over. And to me, that looks about right. So now I've got that, I'm just going to set up my angle to her because I don't want it that long in shot. And then I'm going to do some settings. I might do something on the background as well. Cool, cool. It's really pretty. Yeah, it's starting to look cool. Uh, that shadow in the corner bugs me, so... Is that from the constant lights? No, that's from this. Um, if you're looking now, you won't. See, can you see any shadows in here now, Beck? Yeah, no. So they're the con. Sorry. You blinked. That's better. Mm. So you see just those. No, I beat you. Blink. You'll see just between those two, on, just by me moving a little bit. You'll see that I've removed that shadow. So this is the stuff that I do in camera to do the fine tuning, so I don't have to do this in Photoshop. We're just going off on her eyebrow, so I might just safely. Just pull it back one to there. Now, what do I think of my background? Oh, wrong way. Wrong way? You there we go. Oh, you're showing my bellies. Oh, no. I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh, is this the one that's actually... Yeah, so, so I'm trying to flick, but I'm also... I'm sorry I haven't asked you're Peter any of you guys' it. questions because I'm trying to flick so you guys can see everything. You have a flick, because I'm going to set up another light while you're flicking. So you can have a talk, find some questions or okay. that. So I'm going to set up one more light All on right. the background well, I've got to get some interest. Cool, cool, cool. Look at how much you've affected me. What would you... What, like, stand would you use out on the field? Sorry? What stand would you use out on the field? Field. On the field, um, normally if I'm shooting outside, I'm using a voice activated light stand. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know what a voice activated That's light stand is. called me, guys. Um, Wait, did that even flick over? It did. And do you. The, Peter, no, do I'm just going to show them what a voice activated light stand looks like. Uh, it's on Kiki at the moment. So you can do it to Kiki. No, me. No. <laughs> Why are you filming her? She's normally the <laughs> That's a voice. This is a voice stand. activated light stand. Right? So I can make a model of voice activated light stand. So hold that a minute. Right? So can you turn it that way? <laughs> can you turn it that way a little bit? Can you lift it a bit higher? See that's a voice activated light stand. So on the field I tend to use that's the way I work. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is it allows us to work in public places a little bit more inconspicuous because it's just someone holding a light. Uh, the other thing, it allows me to very quickly move and change things on set uh, without having to worry about stands and lugging around um, sandbags and things like that. If I'm outside, I love natural light, so a lot of the times I try and get my lighting right just with natural light. So that's my answer to that. Do you ever jump in front of the camera? Do you ever take self-portraits? Uh, in the shower sometimes. Oh, gross, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I, look, it's one of those things, look, I hate being photographed, but I work with a lot of 
Um, when I'm doing commercial work, say for uh, I, corporate companies that need headshots and things like that, even bands, I had to do a band the other day, uh, I know how much I hate having my photo taken. So I respect that side of things with the, uh, with who I'm shooting. So I've learnt, taught myself that if anyone, anybody lifts the camera up to me, instead of me going, I hate this, I go, I'm awesome. But I try and just go, I'm awesome in my head. And then I don't absolutely hate the photos. I only half hate them. But um, yeah, I try as hard as I can, I try and keep away from still pictures. You took a selfie with me before. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to, it just <laughs> happened. So I'm just turning on another screen so I can s actually see what camera Beck has got on, or what camera Beck's shooting on. What I'm gonna do is, I'm trying to do this so you can see how, like you can have a place like mine, have all the gear in the world, but we all didn't start that well way. And so Kiki, who's on this camera now, well, you've got some go Godoxes, that's your kit completely, isn't it? And I love them. Yeah, but that's all you've got. And you get into trouble, you ring me up, hey Peter, can I borrow some lights? Yeah, but I don't have any money to do Yeah, I know, but at the end of the day, you get by with what you can afford, yeah. right? And um, I got by with what I could afford when I very first started, like one light, and just slowly built. You still get back to one light. I still use one light a lot. And what I'm gonna do with the backlight, I did an entire shoot with this yesterday. So, you're gonna lose me for a second. And my camera's currently switched off because I was replacing the battery, sorry guys. Also, Rara, people were saying hello to you um, and that you were beautiful. They all uh, I you. might, Beck, I might have messed up this camera. Everyone was saying hello to you before. Uh, what did you say, sorry, Beck? I don't know if you guys can hear Rara, but she's saying hello and that she loves you guys and she hopes you're all staying sane. <laughs> Sorry, right. guys. Beck, I think I bumped into you wide. Into my what? Wide. Oh, that's okay. I'll go fix it. All right. So <laughs> why, hopefully Kiki's got the camera on me. What I'm doing, I'm pretending that I only have two bare, bare heads and I want to get a nice gradient onto the background. So I'm using a V-flat as my head, instead of using a head. I've dialed that in, hopefully just let's make sure I've got my slave. Let's check that that's working. Can you call me that please? Cool. Uh, except our model has moved and has not remembered where she was standing and has just wandered back into no man's land. <laughs> this is why you've got to put tape on the floor. All right, so one of my tricks is if I just look through my viewfinder, come to centre, come to me a bit more, I'm actually letting her focus a bit about there. Right, back a touch, just a little bit. So by me looking through the viewfinder from my first shot, I know that's where she was because she's now centre of screen. She's now in or close to focus. So now I can see that backlight didn't beep. Uh, sync. Where was I? I was reading questions. Right, Have you seen the Christian Slater film Cuffs? Sorry? Have you seen the Christian Slater film Cuffs? Cuffs. Yeah. The name rings a bell, but I can't say I've seen the film. Mm. So I'm just checking my triggers. I lent some of my lights to somebody and they're on different channels to what I had them on. What camera is Peter using? He's using his Hasselblad uh, H6D50C. Did I get it correct? Sorry? The camera you're using is your Hasselblad H50? Uh, for H, yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have that. Give it to me. I do have most of the stuff that we are using and what I'm streaming on and Peter's cameras listed in the description. I've also got a link to, well, Rara's Instagram name and I've got our other model listed in there who will be here. 
soon, but we'll let Peter go back to what he was doing. So I'm just trying to find the channels that I'm on. In fact, I should look on this one. It'll tell me because I'm too short. Any other questions while I'm yeah. completely stuffing around? Yeah, what piece of your equipment is indispensable? What, like, what would be the hardest of your equipment to replace? Hardest? Well, well, everything I have, pretty much all the stuff I've got, I could still buy it again. When it comes to money-wise, the um, Hasselblad's going to be pretty expensive. My Broncolor lighting is going to be pretty expensive. Um, that should be working off there, but it's not. What did you do, Kiki? I'm blaming Kiki because she borrowed it. Let's change my to A1. Who is holding the camera? That is the beautiful Kiki, who is also a photographer herself. She very politely offered to help us out with this because there's no way known I can read questions, flick between cameras, and hold a gimbal at the same time. I think. No modifier today, Peter? Uh, we'll do some modifying later, but I want to do some stuff. Um, I'm trying to do some a I'm trying to do some stuff just using simple lighting, so I purposely decided to start this way. I will definitely be changing modifiers. I'm just trying to build a nice look. Except this is driving up the wall. Because this is saying it's reading air A1 and it's still not flashing. So I'm just going to grab a power one and a different one. Someone reckons it's not the right way to put a flash on a C-stand. Sorry? Someone said it's not the right way to put a flash on a C-stand. Yeah, nothing about me's right. <laughs> I could have told you that. <laughs> um, I just do what I do. Um, I, not being cocky or anything, but when you're working quick on a job and uh, there's very little weight over the other side, so it's not going to fall. I yeah, don't want to break gear, but if Kiki gets in and the center of weight is sitting. Like, yeah, yeah. That the way. centre of weight, yeah, normally I'd have the leg sticking there, but I, once I got this set in, it's the weight, there's hardly any weight on this head the way I've got this set up. So, yeah, if I had a diffuser or a big thing on top of this, yeah, this would fall over and I wouldn't recommend you do it. But because... Slave... I'm going to pull that out. Maybe that might help it. Maybe it can't Do see we the flash. have a tutorial on how we painted the grunge background? Um, Perfect. That one works now. Unfortunately, we don't. It was hand painted, though. Um, you on your dot? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, we don't have a tutorial on it. Sorry. 98%. <laughs> 98%. Cool. Kiki, would you recommend the Godox 600 BM? That's what I've got. That's, she said that's what she's got. And it's fine. And she said it's fine. Cool, finally got it to work. All right, so you'll see, see how that background, I've got a, a gradient happening on that background now. So I'm just going to now change that gradient a little bit. So I'm going to bring the light more in to this front V to try and increase the gradient running across the back. That increased a little bit. I want it even stronger than that. So, what I'm trying to do is get a bigger gradient across that back wall. Like, I want to get a little bit lighter on this side and a little bit darker on the other side. That's starting to work nicely. So, the gradient sort of matching what her face is doing. Um, people can't see that, Beck. What? Now they can. Oh, it's all right. I it's behind time. I was looking on here and it wasn't coming up on here. So that's what I'm liking on that. So that's now given me a nice gradient. It's you're on your spot. Yeah. Cool. That's really pretty. So using two bare bulbs, I've now got this fashion-y feel. It's just slightly cooking. 
just on an eyebrow. I'm going to go a tiny step backwards. So I'm just going to turn the light down by moving the model backwards a tiny bit. And I'm going to, yeah, that's better. I'm now going to make this my shot in the way of I'm going to go black and white. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. You didn't see that one coming. No. Why not? <laughs> um, I'm liking that already. Let's get a little bit of a, I want to have a more as a low, a key, fashion, contrasty type of shot. So if I bring that down a bit, I'm going to try a tiny bit of clarity. I don't want to put too much clarity. I don't want the halo. So as much as I love this halo, which is, in fact, I really like that halo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're sorry you guys can't do this because this is... They can do it a little bit in ACR. Okay. I can get close in ACR to this, not quite as, as aggressive as this. In fact, this is actually working exactly how I want it. So I'm after this nice, powerful fashion headshot for what you would sip. Don't do that. Do you do portraits with a wide angle lens, like a 16 or 20 or 24? Ah, uh, it is tough now, it's I... What did you do? I moved things, <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> what did you do? I broke it. <laughs> I just, I moved something, I don't know what, I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> so all, I, all I'm doing, this is just me uh, going to my taste. I can't teach what my silly brain thinks. I can it's only really just move things till my brain goes, I like that, I don't like that. I know many of you will be sitting back there going, oh, I like these other settings better or whatever, but that's why my pictures will look different to you because I'm building my pictures based on my eye and what I like. And I don't expect anybody else to like what I like, but as long as I like what I'm doing, I'm happy actually, really like that. It's like your main philosophy. Do you like that? Yeah, that looks nice. That looks nice? Someone said my nails deserve their own Instagram. Oh, I think Peter ah. might be overexposed now. Mm. Yeah, he's very overexposed. Mm. That should be fine. Ah, that's better. <sighs> Peter had Southern. So yeah. now I've got this. I'm just going to punch off some shots. Cool. And I want fashion. Cool, nice. That's really cool. Don't come close to that. <laughs> um, try up to the light. There, cool. That's really, that's really cool. What do we got there? That's cool. I like that. What's your constant light bounce? We're using the Razer <laughs> Daylight 7? Yeah, the constant lights that we're using. So just so you're seeing these constant lights around the studio, they're having no effect, and I'll show you, they're having no effect at all on my still image. So if I take a shot without a trigger, and Beck flicks it over to there, you'll see that's the effect that we've got from now, um, our constant lights. The constant lights are just so we can do this video at night time to keep everyone at the other side so of the world happy. So you can see us. Oh. <laughs> Let's turn Beck's light off. <laughs> um, regarding the cuffs question, the main baddie wears a t-shirt with his own face on it. That's why someone was asking. Oh. No, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't wear it. No. <laughs> no, it's Can more fun walking through customs with a picture of Beck on me saying, hey, that's her. <laughs> so embarrassing. Cool. All right. So if any... If there's any questions about this lighting setup. Yeah, sorry, we're falling really far behind the questions because. Well, hurry up. Come well, on. Well, I'm trying chop, to. Chop. Uh, can you recreate the lighting for the haloing shot? That was an amazing shot. Uh, ha which haloing shot? I'm not too sure which one. Um, if I was that, that halo effect that we just did on Rara. Oh. So the haloing effect that we just did on Rara. Oh, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go down. Yeah. So the haloing effect that we did on Rara there, I have done something similar. And if you like, what I might do, I'll show you how I'll do that effect. I'll on, no, that's all right. I'll show you. No, you can talk. Models, they're bloody phones, I don't know. You can talk. No. <laughs> we want to hear this story. You're not going to. So I, what I might do is one of the next couple of setups, I might try and show you how I could get close to that just using lighting. So not using the uh, clarity slider. 
The one problem I have when I'm, if I was doing this with lighting, I can't make it go dark next to light. So I can make it go light next to dark, but I can't make it go the other way. So it means I've just got to do a little bit of burning uh, in Photoshop, but I don't have to do anywhere near as much as what that's gone. Rara, what do you tell yourself when you're modelling? I like those goes slow. Like what goes through your oh, this is gonna be like what yeah. goes through your head when you're modelling? Uh, I guess I just think of things that inspire me. Yeah, like different music, things like that. Yeah. 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 You got that for me. Let me go. See Tell what other true. questions are. She's not. She's lying. And she's are there any of Peter's... She's thinking about the lead singer from who? Aerosmith? <laughs> Aerosmith? Oh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> what do you find more versatile, Peter, an Octobox or an umbrella? If I could only have one, I'd have an umbrella with a sock. Hmm. Because I can do more with an umbrella with a sock. What Octobox sock? will only just... What the sock? <laughs> the umbrella will only do an umbrella. I can still do a hell of a lot with, um, uh, with a... Octo, I can still do a lot with it, but with the umbrella, I could then take the sock off and get a different look. Uh, now is the time where there are so many photographers, so what's the main key to be a standout photographer? Uh, have your own style, have your own look. No simpler, ignore every other person in the world. I can't say this enough. Seriously, don't listen to another photographer, not even me. I think it's time we turned off our channel. <laughs> no, I was um, <laughs> If you send me pictures to critique, my answer is I can't critique it because I'm going to tell you how to make your pictures look like what I like looking at. I'm not going to be your customer. Why would you care what I like? So seriously, a real artist creates for themselves. Then he lets the rest of the world decide if they like it or hate it. And you only need 10% of the world to sort of like it and you can make a living off it. You'll get a following. You'll get a group that follows you for your style. And there's plenty of uh, photos out there that I look at and go, oh, I don't get it, I don't like it. But I'm not saying it's bad, because those people are very successful making good money. But to my taste, it's not what I would hang on my wall or look at a computer screen and go, oh my God, I love that. So you've really got to put your fingers in the ear and just shoot what you love and seriously not listen to anybody. Next. Next is, no will this be available to watch at a later date? Yes, yes it will. It. We'll always have it here. Um, hello to everyone tuning in. We are so happy that you guys are enjoying this so far. I assume you guys are enjoying it. Um, Come on, quick. Where can we buy a Beck t-shirt from the workshops website? I Actually, I don't have the workshops website in the description because all workshops are postponed. But the website's still up there. But the website's and there. You'll so put it in the description later. I will. I'll put it in there later. I'm oh, sorry. Do I need to get next to you? That's all right. That's all right. Uh, hello, everyone. Don't worry about hellos. I know. I know. So I'm scrolling through. Questions. Are there any plans for an outdoor natural light live stream in the future? That's hard. It is. Like, How if we Kiki, can't if Kiki uh, people actually, people have huh. asked in the past our live stream setup. This is our setup. If this is how right, much so, goes in. So we in. need a glass of water, we need a bottle of wine, <laughs> we need a glass of wine, we need another bottle of water, we have a, a cup of whiskey, a <laughs> hairbrush and some lip liner and but we've got this blower thing <laughs> and we have this awesome keychain that you'll never lose. Um, what else have we got? Oh, we've got some tobacco and some papers. I might have one of those. Um, um, sorry. So yeah, this trying to get all of this to live stream outside probably be a little bit difficult. You haven't answered the main reason why we can't. Internet? Yes, there's no internet. <laughs> we're at the moment here. We've got an upload speed of 60 uh, megabits a second. Once we drop below 30, well, sound will start to not sync properly. We'll have heaps of problems. We can't pull that sort of internet out in the field. We'd love to. We are going to do some. We might do some in my backyard because we can use my home. True, that would be yeah, a good we'll idea. We'll see what we can do. We'll get you bombarded by kookaburras. Aww. Cute. Uh, it would be great to see a comparison between the various bronchola reflectors you're using. Yeah, I'm going to start doing... So, so while you ask me questions, I'm going to start setting another... or just do a, a change of my setup. So you keep doing what you're doing. Autofocus is having difficulties. Maybe Peter's moving too fast. Yes. 
<laughs> he darts around the studio. Uh, the, the big problem is if you look behind me, it's all white. Everyone knows what autofocus is like on a, a non-contrast background. So, and Kiki's really new to this. She's pretty crap, so. No, she's not, she's doing fantastically. Is this the sort of thing that we have on Inspire? Mm. Really, yeah, kind of. Nah. Kind of, but not really. Uh, Inspire, uh, when we're our Inspire ones, we actually go into a lot more detail. We slow it down a little bit. We take a lot more time on the setups. We're just and also winging it tonight. We're I don't sit here and drink wine on Inspire. She doesn't drink wine. We're really, we're just winging it tonight. We're just going to be doing what people want to see us do. And when I don't hear anybody say something, I'll just make up something. So it inspires a little bit more, even though it's, we still do it as if we're really shooting, we still have an idea of exactly what we're trying to achieve. So we did one yesterday with an art nude model and we wanted to shoot her fashion nude, not art nude. And yeah, that was very, we went through our processes of the look we wanted to get and then how we built the lighting to get it, then how I got the model to then give that look. Uh, what's the total area of your studio and height? Uh, seven metre high and we're 350 square metres of floor space. Talk to the camera. Oh, that one. Sorry. Do I have to look at her? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you keep talking, I'm moving things. Someone said Rara's very patient. And She's, um, Rara's awesome. She's, we've been shooting together, what, six years? And she knows exactly what I'm like, so she just puts up with me. Oh, question for me. I am drinking a... Cabernet Merlot. It's really delicious. Sorry. We need to rename this. This is the Beck Show. <laughs> no, it's not. People are asking me questions. Uh, so, if someone thinks it'll be fun to see some dramatic light from slightly top slash behind and see how you think about the placement and light and shadow. So, if someone wants to see dramatic light? Yeah. Well, that was a little bit. I, I am going to go with some... Uh, more uh, moody, aggressive light with our next model. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to play a little bit more with this. with this light and change. Get this great big boomy thing out of my head. Actually, I don't know why I put it on. This is annoying in this. Um, with the other person talking also, I just realised, mm -hmm. with the other person talking about that's not the right way to use a C-stand, the one thing, because it wasn't much weight and I wasn't extending the arm out, but a lot of times I will put my weight on the long leg here. Can you see this, Kiki? Uh, so I put my weight on the long leg and have my light off this because it's much harder to lift that up if we go this way and put the weight there and the head here, it's really easy to fall sideways. So I'm so used to having the higher leg on the opposite side to where the light is. So that's why I had it instantly set up that way before, but I didn't have the lights too far off it to give me a problem. So that's why I didn't really worry too much about it. Anyway, back to and Andy that said that's over six times the floor space he's got right now. We're yeah, it's a pretty big studio. It was a warehouse and Peter converted it into a studio. Yeah, even though you say that, my last studio was uh, 80 square metres, four metre high, very skinny in an arcade. And I can't believe some of the stuff. We shoot, shot motorbikes and everything yeah. in there. We, we even shot a Mini in there one day. We got drove a Mini up the arcade and got it into our front doors. You just learn to work with what you've got. I know that a month after I'd got this fully built the way I want it and set up, I said, this isn't big enough. And I was seriously thinking of getting the building next door because I already had a, a connection through. Um, and sometimes I really wish I did, and then other times I go, no, I don't use this space enough to have warranted that. So you can never have too much space. True, true. Can we do or show shoots with a beauty dish with and without the grid only? We're definitely doing that. Cool. 
So I'm doing, uh, the look I'm doing now is just using the lighting that we just did for the background. I'm going to use bounce board lighting to light beauty. And then the next thing I was going to do is beauty dish with and without grids. Cool. Cool. Now we're caught up on questions. At least I hope so. I'm really sorry if I have missed your question. Um, if I have missed your question, please pop it down below. And also I just wanted to say love to everyone saying hi and showing love. Thank you guys for being amazing and, and watching and all of that nice fluffy stuff. Cool. So what I'm going to do now is just light ra ra with bounce board lighting. So what I mean by that is I'm just going to use a bare bulb and I'm going to use this V-flat as my light and I'm going to move it and manipulate it till I get a really nice light on ra ra. Let's turn this back on. Let's kick it in there to start with and let's take it off. So I don't want to go on my old settings, so one of the good things about this program is if I just jump on to any old picture, whatever picture's on will be what settings go on my camera. And cool, that's where we're going to start. You'll see that we are coming from one side, but you'll see how soft this gradient is. So I'm just going to work around by moving, at the moment, I'm going to leave the light pretty much as it is, but I'm going to move the V flat, and I'm just going to give it a bit more power too. And hopefully Rara just keeps her spot. And, and hopefully that can show what people... Instantly, so I'm now overexposed, but it's only just overexposed. We'll see just by moving that V flat, how big a difference that made from the shot before to the shot after. You'll see it. we're just going off on that cheek. I'm going to bring that V flat even further forward. And hopefully that pulls a little bit more power off the light. It did, so you see we've lost the overexposure. We've got the edge of a Rembrandt starting to happen, but this isn't quite where I want it yet. It's getting close. So I'm going to keep bringing this board around and I'm going to swing this head. So the head's aimed into both sides. It's pretty much to the middle of the board so I can get a side bounce and a front bounce. And what I'm going to do now is just slowly rotate the light to the front board. And this is softening off nicely. And this is, if you want to learn how to work with light, sorry, missed it, guys. get a bare bulb, uh, sorry, uh, use a, a pro photo bare bulb that's just that dead flat, or use any other light but put a shallow reflector on it. A normal bare bulb won't work because it sticks out. And you're going to light the model off the side. This is coming nicely. I'm just going to keep moving. Sorry for all these camera transitions, guys. I was trying to catch up with Peter so you could see the V-flats. Cool. Refocus again. This is getting really nice. See this nice little Rembrandt we're starting to get on this? And it's this beautiful soft light that we're starting to get. I'm liking this a lot. I'm just going to turn the bulb a little bit. So when I'm saying, what I'm going to do is turn the bulb more from firing into both sides. I'm going to bring it more coming into that front board. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I'm doing that is I want to get a little bit more power coming from the front and a little bit less coming from the side. And yeah, you'll see how that's softened off nicely and do that a touch more. This is getting really close to what I'm trying to get. So let's get a little bit more onto that front and I'm going to bring this even across more so the lights are actually coming in full that's really pretty i'm nearly happy rara will agree with me i'm never completely happy with lighting am i 
I'm always tweaking it. I can't help it, I just gotta keep, even during a shoot, during a shoot, like we'll get into the shoot and I'll still keep tweaking it a little bit and pretty much all I'm doing as that little turn I just did with the light, all I'm doing is going to take a picture, look at the latest picture and then decide, do I like it more? So there's the latest, there's the one previous, do I like that one or do I like the new one better? And I definitely like the new one better. There's just more, it's softer on her cheek for my taste. So because that got better, I'm gonna take it a fraction further and see if it gets better again. So I'm moving everything just a little bit. So if it doesn't get better, it's really easy for me to move it back because I'm only moving it a little bit back. Cool. Check again. Yeah, definitely. I think I'm pretty happy with how that's got to now. We're on this one now. I'm on that one. It's just got oh my wait. belly. Thank wait, you. no, it has it. No, it hasn't. I need a. Oh, you idiot. There we go. Now it's on us. So we can Sorry. Now, now you can talk to that one. Because I got my head in it. No, you need to bend down a bit. I've got to bend down. Yeah, there you go. Now you just want to see down the top. No you put it. <laughs> Stop it. So while we've got. <laughs> that I'm now just going to get a little bit of light on the background. And look, I don't use a lot of um, background lights. Um, getting, I'm just gonna grab It's a getting really dark in here. The sun is setting in Australia. Sorry, I've fallen behind on questions, guys. I've been letting you Peter do his thing. Go up to, what are you on, 800 ISOs? Uh, yes. Go up to 1250. Okay. So you can slowly sneak your cameras up to 1250 and you should be fine. Aren't people going to tell us that 12.50 is too high? You should have asked a question before you adjusted that. I should have. Should have, could have, would have. I'll ask a question now. Uh, there is a question for models, which I'll ask shortly. I'm not forgetting you. Um, do you ever shoot on film, manual focus? I think MF, yeah, MF is manual focus, yeah? I shoot manual focus all the time. Uh, or large format? Large format, I'd love to. I don't have a large format camera. I actually have never owned a large format camera. I wish I had. One day I will get one. Um, uh, film, I've got uh, Hasselblad uh, 503 out the back and I've got a Mamiya RB67. Uh, both of them, I better put a weight on that. Both of them I love, but commercially they're just 100% non-viable. I have a Imacon sca flatbed scanner for scanning film. The time it takes to do everything is just ridiculously long and commercially and privately, I don't have that time. I literally, myself, do not have the time to go through that as much as I really love it. So I do cheats where we've just, we've, we've actually got a, Tutorial coming out both on Inspire and we've got a different one coming out on YouTube. I was looking at the wrong screen. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> both Inspire and YouTube coming out soon, showing some of my tricks to make a medium format film more like large format film. Um, they're just, they're things I do. So I've done lots of things like scan uh, grey pictures of film and then overlay the grain and the vignetting. That's getting there. What I'm doing now while I'm talking is I'm slowly putting that halo onto Rara without using focus. Um, I'm moving the light closer to the wall to make the halo smaller and to turn up the power of the light. I don't want it directly behind her head like some religious halo. I wanted a little oh bit God, off I just centre. realised I had it on the wrong camera. I'm so sorry. It looked really bad for like five seconds. Oh, good one. Sorry. So I'm just slowly adjusting this to my taste. And again, I can't explain what my silly brain sees. All I know is I look at the picture and I look at what I like and what I don't like. The one thing I'm hating is a little shadow over to this side from uh, that, that light's casting. And this is still feeling a little bit too uniform. So I'm going to try and fix both those things at the same time. Uh, 
Yes, the capture program that I'm flicking between is what Peter is tethering into, so you're seeing what he is shooting. It is called Focus, and it's Hasselblad's tethering software. We're still trying to get something to work with our Sonys. We've tried, what, four, four or five times? Yeah, about four times. Uh, four or five different cable setups. We just cannot get something that we can, can consistently enough get to work for us to do uh, a live with yet. But once we do, we will definitely show <laughs> what I can do with Capture One and the Sony. The other thing is, as much as um, I shoot Hasselblad and love Hasselblad, uh, this program, a couple of years ago, Hasselblad were talking about making it available for all cameras, but once DJI bought them, that went in the rubbish bin which is a real shame because this is by far the best tethering program. It is really quick, it's really stable, it shows me instantly what I want to see. That's looking nice. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> Make sure that's clear. Oh, wait, hang on. Which one am I on? There we go. Oh, now, there now, we go. now they can see it, sorry. Yeah. Sorry guys, I haven't used this. I like this. that. Now, so, so I'm just going to quickly in fact, I need to, so before I start playing with it, I'm just going to get an amazing picture. So you ready? No pressure. The whole world's watching. <laughs> no pressure at all. That's really pretty. Cool, that's really pretty. Now, I know what face that is. That's her face when she's thinking about her awesome brothers. Right? really stiff and pretty. Yeah, whenever you talk about your family, you always go, yeah, see? So all I'm going to do now is I've got this nice doe-eye picture. I'm not going to do, this is going to be more like a commercial look, so I'm going to quickly keep it in colour and do you like it? Yeah, sure. I push my fringe to the side so it doesn't like it. Oh, there we go. Now we can see me and Peter sitting at the computer. Uh. Oh, no, wait, no, we can't. No, we can. Oh, oh, look how cute, we're all together. You've got a zipper <laughs> in your head. It's all right, leave it. Have you adjusted the other camera's exposures? I'm about like to do that now that you're doing this. All right, so I'm going to quickly keep this as a colour. Maybe take this as a fashion colour picture. Uh, first thing I'm going to most likely play around with is get a little bit more oh, contrast in this. I see. Now, the yeah. two problems that's going to happen with the contrast coming in, see how orangey yellow her Maybe skin has gone? The other thing is we've blocked oh up yeah. the blacks a little bit, so I'm just going to add in a little bit of shadow fill. Number one, it's just unblock those blacks a little bit, so that's too much, but that's quite nice there. And with my colour, if I just desat about the same, so I've pulled about 11 in my contrast, if I just desat about 11, you'll see, see how it gives us that nice fashion-y type of feel? In fact, I might just put it a little bit more and pull my contrast a little bit more. So 22 looks about good. Yeah, that's giving me a nice feel. Um, don't know how much room I've got. No, it's going to cook me pretty quick. I might just do another little thing. There was one of the old, very old programs for Hasselblad. Uh, I think it was called Flex Frame or Flex Color or something. Um, it had a built-in little thing that we end up calling a fashion S. And what it is, is I've locked down my highlights, so I've come into about my printable area, which is around about 245. I've come up to about 14 on my blacks, and I'm just going to put a very slight boost in the mids, and you can see that, that just gives it that nice dreamy finish. Dreamy. 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 It looks so much better black and white now. So that's look too done. We're on this one now. We're on this one now. Oh, no, wait, no, we're not. Now it's Do you no. know what you're actually pressing? Oh, I'm getting my arrows confused. You're getting your arrows confused. Maybe it's too much wind. No, no it's... You're on the no. Back. Where are you going? Oh, this is not changing. That's on that, and now if I hit that, now we're on here. You there sure? Yeah, I'm positive. You're positive. Oh, yeah, yes. there you go. It's because <laughs> these ones are on different, so I've got a... Yeah, good excuse. I need to put them Do on. Do you like that? <laughs> Social distancing. Or, or, you, or, you, or you just, <laughs> you're just spreading the love, the diseases. <laughs> oh, my God. People are going to yell at us for being politically incorrect. We are very politically incorrect. We were born that way. How big um, a difference is when the V-flat is wide open and tight close? Make a lot of difference. At the moment, while we've got it, if you, 
I can't. I mean, no, it's like no, it's all right. It's at the moment it's at about a, f a full 90 degree cur bend. The light is mainly on. Sorry, this one, which is the one coming in yeah, on top. Yeah, I'll flick it to Kiki. Kiki's going to show. If I brought the V flat skinnier, yep. it would send more light as a direct beam, and still works beautiful. It's a, a different way you can do it. And if we made it wider, it's going to diffuse the bounce off it. And the tutorial we did yesterday, I had mm. it very wide. Yeah. And it worked beautiful, really wide yesterday. It's coming soon. So, yeah. DSLR uh, or mirrorless? Uh, I can't help mirrorless. It, look, my Hasselblad's DSLR. But I also have a mirrorless one. The reason I say mirrorless is anything that makes my job better as a photographer, anything that makes my job easier, I want it. So with mirrorless, I can now see in my viewfinder exactly what my exposure is going to be and what my look's going to be. So if I'm overexposing before I even take a picture, my zebra ring's going off. If I'm in too contrasty light or too bright, it's going to show me all that in the actual viewfinder, which I don't, with a DSLR, I have to take a picture, then look at a picture to see what I'm doing. Whereas with mirrorless, I'm seeing in the viewfinder what I'm taking a photo of. And I'd say because of that, it makes my job really, really easy for exposure, for setting up moods, for getting the feeling of the type of shot I want. Cool. Yeah, how long do you think you need to use one light modifier to really get to know its capabilities and master it and in what order to learn to work with individual modifiers? All right, well, I was really, in my learning curve, I learned very quickly, I'm self-taught with studio lighting and I assisted one or two very, very good photographers, but photographers who used up to 13 lights. Measured everything with light meters, understand that 100% how I can have, I could be lighting back and say, all right, I want F5.6 here, I want F11 there, I want F8 here to get this sort of look. I understand how to do that and it's a boring way of lighting because it's like lighting with numbers. It becomes very boring and you're lighting everybody the same way. It's, it's like painting with numbers. It's and I guess that's exactly why as I was doing my very best to flick between things to show you guys how, and I see this day in, day out, Peter will honestly work the way that he was just showing. He will adjust it, take a photo, come and check and it's just to his eye. So all the time when people are like, how do I do this? It's just to Peter's eye. Yeah, so when I decided my work was getting boring, even though I had plenty of commercial work, I wasn't actually liking my personal work. It mm. didn't have the soul of the photographers I really loved looking at, like your Patrick de Michelier and your Peter Lindbergh, your Helmut Newtons, Avedon, Penn. There's lots of photographers I loved, this gorgeous lighting and feeling they had that I wasn't, I didn't feel, I felt my lighting was too, uh, camera clubby, too portrait perfect. It didn't have a soul. Yeah, I'm doing you. Um, <laughs> uh, it's called, that's the Bequan yeah. flu. That you've okay. made me get it. I'm now using my hands. Uh, so what I did at one day or one weekend, I decided, no, nah, I'm going to go back to one light. I got a model in on the Saturday, a model in on the Sunday. I did two eight hour days just playing with one light. And since then, I've pretty much, most of my work for myself is one light. Commercially, I've got to do whatever my client needs. But for myself personally, um, I'm one light. Like, how often do you see me use two lights on you? Yeah. So, yeah, um, I think if you can master one light, you don't need your second light, unless you need to light your background different. So we'll use other lights if I need to change what the background's doing. But for the actual subject, I love one light. Um, someone was asking about the, I think we'll jump in back a little bit, the height of the light. So I think like the difference if the, um, if the lamp, lamp height is tilted up versus down. You, it's where you're pointing the power. So what a lot of people get confused at, so there's our subject. If the light's there and I point the light there or I point the light there, the direction of light that's hitting the subject is exactly the same. It's just the power of the light is now going above their head or the power of the light is going below them. But the direction the light's hitting them is the same. Uh, would the 25 mil thick poly boards be okay to use as? Yeah, they're okay. They're a little bit flimsy. Like you'll find they're a bit wobbly. I prefer the 50 mil. 
um, is better. But if you, that's all you've got, that's all you've got, just make it work. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Someone said the live stream setup is amazing. It's rather hectic. It's hectic, okay. Is <laughs> your are your veins coming out yet? A little bit. I am kind of getting a little bit stressed. Yay, stressed back, everyone's favourite. Um, you ask questions, I'll start setting our next lighting for up. For client shoots, is it standard charged labour hour for lighting and setup time? Yeah, unless... Um, now, most of the time, I'll have my place set up uh, efficient, which means all the lights very handy, all the stands set up and very handy. They might have sent me, unless they've sent me through the exact look they want, which I can pre-set up before they come in, I would not going to do that because I want to get paid for that time. Yeah. So normally, and we've normally got hair and makeup and things like that happening. So what I'm normally doing, the client will come in, hair and makeup will come in. While hair and makeup's happening, I'm working with the client on the look and the feel and what we're going to do. I can normally do like a, my most intricate lighting is only going to take me half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, the cheapest hair, uh, quickest hair and makeup artist I've ever worked with is going to take eight to 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm always done way before hair and makeup's yeah. done. Someone said the audio's too quiet, but I've only seen one comment <coughs> saying that. So it might just be because now we're sitting at the computer, we're talking a bit We're quieter. just being a bit careful that we're not going to We don't want to clip. clip. So we, because we're talking at different levels, we might We normally sometimes yell at each other. Like, not in a bad way, but... Like yes, you do. Oh, what? Where's my wine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Um, sorry. We, can, we can sneak it up maybe a little bit. I just don't want to clip. Yes, the background oh. looks pink or purple. We're not too sure why. We don't know why because it's... I don't know. We've tried to colour. See, if I colour balance off, it's done something weird. I don't... Mm, okay, at least it's... There we go. Peter trying to call and balance. Oh yeah, see oh. it's still. It's that's making it weird. more purple. I don't know. Um, I I know Peter one way to it. I know one way to fix it. We just go that. They fixed it. <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't. They didn't see that. Do I, I no. Do what I, I what I actually think it is is the HMIs we're using as um, to light in us. here to light us in the background. The flashlight's much more powerful, so it's putting that light in the background. But I might drop. I'll drop a different background for the next look. Can you tether the into focus and touch the screen point for focus and flyer? Um, don't know. On my hassle, I'm using the 50, which doesn't have touch focus. I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty certain on my, yeah, no, 100% certain on my X1D, I can still focus on, sorry, touch point on the program. I'm not sure. On the camera, I can definitely move my yeah, focus on the uh, camera. But the other thing is, I, you've got on the mirrorless, you've got this beautiful thing called focus peaking. So it is quicker and more accurate than any autofocus. So. so I said this whole setup is goals, the live stream, the assistant, the space, the models, the gear, everything, lol. Lol, what they don't <laughs> like. No, they said it's goals. Oh, like it's the goals. What the lapel? <laughs> what the lapel? The David, the David LaChapelle. <laughs> all right, um, so you right. keep asking questions. I I'm gonna go to beauty dish. We're gonna do one more look for you and then you're done. Yep. Follow yeah, yeah. please. So I'm just going to swap to a beauty dish, but you can ask me questions still. Someone said one sun, one light. Makes sense, Peter. Sometimes he makes sense, not all the time. Um, other people are saying the audio is fine. Okay, that makes me stress a little bit less. We hate bad audio, especially because... I don't know if people know about Peter, but he comes from like an audio sound engineering background before he got into photography. So like audio is one thing he's really fussy about. So we always try and make sure the audio is good for you guys. Please also always let us know if audio is bad so we can fix it. Um, yeah, and I hate clipping. People are saying they can't see the stream, but... They can't see it. Yeah, but with... We've got two computers testing it, and we can see it as well. So maybe hit refresh because yeah, yeah it's coming up on it. two separate computers. Yep. I'm really sorry that that is happening, though. What they can hear us talking, but they can't see the pictures. Yeah, I think so. Which um, maybe I need to turn the brightness up on their screen. Oh my god, you absolute <laughs> smarty pants. Um. um. Da, da, da. People are loving the live setup. And someone wants to know how they can get a nice silhouette picture. 
Oh, oh, nice silhouette. Yeah. I have a feeling that Peter is about to do Beauty Dish, and if he does Beauty Dish, I'm pretty sure he's going to show you how to do that. Yeah, I can do, I'll, do a, I'll do a silhouette one at the end. Do so I'll do Beauty Dish and I'll do a silhouette. Silly a silly wet. wet. A silly wet. A silly wet picture. Ew, um, that sounds really gross. <laughs> do, do. ASMR stream. ASMR actually like makes my skin crawl. I don't I couldn't I could never bring myself to do it. I don't know why. It just um, everyone else is saying everything's good. So wants to know them. if me or you are gonna learn to shoot if I can show up. Since me or you are going to learn to shoot one day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll just leave it to Peter because he seems to be really good at it. So yeah. Good at what? Shooting. Someone asked if me and Rara are going to learn to shoot and I said we'll we just... We can see. just be in his Twitter space <laughs> and know all the information for free. Know everything. I think, I could I think I'm going to start holding my own work. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, Beck's going to... Well, we should do that. Beck was going to do... See, Beck's got a, her vlog that she does <laughs> and Here she never go. does it. Here we go. So it's her, it's her vlog when you're not having a vlog. Um, so but she was going to do a vlog of her boyfriend doing her makeup. Yeah, I still need to do that. Uh, yeah, Gunner. I need, well, we're in self isolation now. Gunner. He's home all the time. He can so totally do we it. might, we, that could be really funny. In fact, we're definitely going to do that. Beck's going to do my portrait and she's going to set up the lighting, the camera, everything <laughs> live. And I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> So we're just going to make Beck do the entire thing from start to finish. She's been with me full time for. Yeah, she's been with me for full time for more than two years. She's been to heaps of workshops. She should know exactly how to do everything by now. I, I know. Oh, everything. she's stressed now. I know. And right? you can't. You're not allowed to drink wine while you're doing it either. Okay, that's like the biggest joke I think I've ever heard. Um, I could totally do this. I've got this, guys. Thank you for believing in me. I believe. Thank you, thank you, I got this. Talk louder, nobody can hear you. No, they can, everyone's saying everything's fine. Uh, oh, I need to answer this as well, before we get back to me. Sorry. Um, how do we buy t-shirts? They are on Peter's workshop websites. I will put it down in the description. I don't have it down there at the moment because all workshops are postponed, but the site is still live. Go to that website and click on merch. All of the shirts are for sale. Go to any one of our websites, you'll be fine. I will find a link to the workshop's yep. website. Yeah, that's... Correct. Thanks, Peter. I'll do your job. Do you want bitch, aren't I? You're so nasty <laughs> sometimes. Cool. So I might get Supermodel <laughs> back in here. You can ask questions while she yeah. walks in. Someone said that the photo we posted on in the Instagram story, you look like a mad scientist. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, no, I'm cr crazy than mad. <laughs> you can stop laughing now. It wasn't that <laughs> funny. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Cool. So I'm just going to swap lenses. It's going to make this a little bit more portraity. So I'm going from 100 mil, which would be like uh, 80 ish on a DSLR to a 150, which is going to be more like about a 130 on a DSLR. How do you feel about fabric beauty dishes? Fab oh, well, look, collapsibles. Yeah. Well, I have one, don't I? Yeah, I the know. I was, I was about to say. Um, they're not as good as long as they're white inside. If they're silver inside, it's not a beauty dish. It's called a reflector. A beauty dish needs to be white on the inside to take get that beautiful property out of it. Um, but as long as it's white inside and it has something that's going to deflect the light from being straight on the model, um, yeah, we travel with we one. Travel with so one. we've got both a bronze colour and the pro photo one. Mm -hmm. And naughty, naughty me has put the pro photo Would you stop speed ring on the bronze colour one because I like the bronze colour beauty dish better. That's sacrilege. <laughs> you shouldn't say this live <laughs> on YouTube. But we travel with pro photo, so yeah. I'm going to get killed by both countries, you the companies. Are. But no, one of, they're both great lighting companies. So um, it's like your Mercedes Benz or BMW. People Merc. have a taste. Well, I'm happy. Not that I've ever driven a Merc. Happy to drive a BMW with a Mercedes Benz motor. 
Uh, all right, so I've got all my previous settings on there, so I'm going to come back and take this shot again without any settings on there. And I already know that it's a little bit dark, so I'm just going to pump it up. So this is your straight beauty dish. Um, the one thing with beauty dish, uh, it's a light that'll put me out of business because <laughs> it's so easy to get a beautiful light off. <laughs> what I am remembering, Kiki, can you get around here a minute? Sure. So the one thing that I would like you to see is right around. In here we've got white, which is going to give us a beautiful soft bounce. Our direct light is not going to hit the model, which means in the centre we've got quite a dark light. It will meet eventually. But what I can do now is I can feather. So on my last pitch, she, look, she looked a little bit bright up on her forehead. So I'm going to turn the light up a little bit. So hopefully that is more aimed at her forehead, which hopefully will just take a little bit of the power of the light off her forehead. But it'll keep the shadow the same. So if I go before and after, you see it's slight on the forehead. See how much brighter that is just there? See how it's gone slightly darker. So they're, they're the little subtle things I can do with it. Um, you'll see the shadows didn't really change as I tilted it because the direction of light that's hitting Rara is exactly the same. Uh, I want a little bit more power. I'm going to actually go the other way now a little bit. I'm just going to do my, do I like it more or less? Yeah, someone said, can you shoot with Beauty Dish with close distance from the model, like really close, like 45 degrees? Yep. In fact, I was thinking of getting her a little bit closer anyway. Now, just stay there for a minute. I'm just going to slowly bring like. you in. Yeah, no, I can shoot very close yeah, to the beauty dish. What time is it? Yeah, it's nearly 7.30 in Melbourne. Oh, one Quick. way to cook, kill an hour and a half. So that's getting nice. I'm just going to turn down. No, I'm going to lift that light a little bit higher. Hopefully that turns it down a bit. That's turned it now nicely. I'm quite liking that. Yep, I think I'm liking. Cool, that's really, that's really pretty. Cool. Do you want to step in a little step? Now that's going to turn the power up. Yep, cool. So I'm on 7.1. I'm going to go down to 6.7. This is going to steepen the light onto her and I'm too close now. I'm just going to move back a fraction. Cool, cool. Yes, I'm liking that a lot. We've got this, we've still got the undershadow that's a really diffused soft undershadow. I'm actually really liking that picture a lot. And you can see the, this light is just one of those lights that are just too easy to use. Drop this to my preferred look. Black and white. Yeah. Yeah, someone, said someone said before that they just love beauty dishes. Yeah, it's, it's seriously so easy. I can get a really nice light straight away with a beauty dish. He said he wishes they weren't so expensive though. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> I, got, I got, no, you can buy, I got cheap Chinese beauty dish, which I love. It's about 20 years old now and I really like it. So I get that, that gives me a nice look. Come in. Now, little things I can do now, if that background wall is a little bit too dark now, I don't, I'm not a fan of pitch black. So if, with having rolling walls, I can now just roll this wall up closer and now, cool, get a nice pretty wall with, now we've got some detail in the back behind her. So now I've got that detail, uh, let's spin this wall around so I can show you what the grid's going to do. Because while we can't see much of the background, we're not going to see the effect the grid's going to do. So our background is just, uh, Beck gets bored sometimes, so this is just her finger painting. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Cool. So that'll give you our background now. And we're just going off on her head a fraction. Am yeah, I that blue is just overexposure warnings if anyone is not familiar with Hasselblad's I'm just going to turn the light down a touch. Cool. 
the bang. Um, do you want to take the tiniest step backwards? Sorry, yeah, James. perfect. So there I just turned the light frame. down with the model. Yeah, cool. So now I've got that. If I now throw on, in fact, before I do that, let's see what happens when I put a sock on it. A sock. All right. So I'll put a sock on it. <laughs> you absolute idiot. It's late. <laughs> and 7.30, you old man. I know, I'd be home having a beer by now. Well, you're having a southern in your happy place. <laughs> and I'd be in my racing car. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I'd actually be on the computer editing a picture to go on Instagram. So I put the sock on it. It should pull a bit of power off the light. And it's, well, it's actually put power on the light. Did you move? <laughs> what the sock? Stop stealing my f jokes. What the fork? So okay. that's actually right. So if you want to get more power out of your beauty dish, put a sock on it. That's actually turned my power up. So I'm going to turn. Peter learn things. something new every friggin' day. Uh, so cool. Someone said the chairs in the. Uh, I'm confused. You're confused. Oh, that yeah, no, no. Um, you were talking about. I should flick it over. Sorry, I was reading. I'm just looking. Yeah. I'm still. Do you want to take a tiny step back? I'm just going to use my voice activated model. Can we see? We can't see <laughs> anything on that. Excuse me. Guys. There we go. I use the voice acted model to move, turn the light down on her. But you'll see the difference between the sock and what the sock. <laughs> um, oh wait, I should flick it over to the thing. You should thing. flick it over to what Sorry. we're shooting. So that's with the straight beauty dish, that's with the sock on the beauty dish. You'll see it's just a more diffused but still a beautiful soft light. I hardly ever use it like this but um, I'm n not normally trying to make my lights softer. I normally can light a nice soft look but now I'm going to drop a grid on. So what the grid's going to do, we're on you. Cool. What the grid? So what a grid's going to do is exactly this. So you can see me through the grid, but see as I turn it off access, you can't see me. That's what it's going to do to the light. You need to go to the toilet. No. Oh, you just, I you're know. jigging. <laughs> I'm used to Beck. Whenever Beck jigs, it means you need to go to the toilet. Cool. So right now, now putting the grid right. on, I'm definitely going to lose some power. It's going to pull off about half, half to two thirds of a stop. So I could have used my trigger to turn this up, but I'd rather show off that I can balance. Um, cool. You'll see the big difference is going to be both the background, and it's definitely pulled off a lot of power. So I'm definitely going to wind up a lot more than that. Sorry, oh, I'm falling right. behind on you guys giving me sneak feedback up a what step now. You want. Now, the reason it's pulled off a lot of power is because I've My got this tilted down more at round about her waist, which means it's pulled direction power off Rara. See, that's really cool. You can see how that's really separated her off. I'm going to just tilt this light up a little bit. There we go. You guys can see how far got it on this view. So yeah, you guys can see how far Peter is and stuff. That's looking a bit pretty. I need a bit more power. I'm just going to throw a little bit more. Let's see if I got this set right. Power. Oh, cool, I did. Okay, this is a quick way of working it. In fact, I don't need to look there. I can do it off the back of my camera because my camera has an overexposure warning on it. And that looks like it's really close to going over. But that's going it to give us... It is going off just on our forehead. Yeah. That's going to... You'll see how that's now that vignetted off that background, which has given us a nice interest. See the difference? So it actually gives us that beautiful moodiness. I really, really enjoy using grids with um, beauty dishes. Now, somebody is asking about silhouettes. So I'm going to show you a quick one-sided silhouette. Does focus work with other camera models other than Hasselblad? No, not tethered, unfortunately. Look good to me. Not tethered, unfortunately, you can 
use it to edit some of your RAWs, but you won't be able to use some of the sliders. Did I get it correct? Yeah, it'll work with most cameras except for phase. That's like phase will work with most cameras except for Hasselblad. Those two companies are they absolutely. Not friends? No, they're not friends at all. They oh. hate each other. Oh, that's mean. Phase used to run a day of. They'd invite lots of people out and find different ways to, uh, to destroy Hasselblads. I'm not joking, they used to have elephants walk on them and stupid things like that. Anyway. Uh, someone wants to know if we have a shoot planned that's similar to the picture on the Inspire login page, which is the shoot with the incredible Danny. No, oh. no, the login page has got Danny, um, who lives back in Israel now. Oh, Danny, which... We, that lighting setup is one that Peter does all the time. It is just one light from the side. We do have tutorials, but actually, oh, I think the one, the U video on YouTube with Rara, I'm pretty sure that covers that lighting, does it? We'll I just understand. do a recreating of... We'll do that. We'll do that, we'll do that for you guys. I mean, we're everyone's in lockdown, so just we're just going to keep making videos for you guys. I hope anyway. you don't mind. We hope you enjoy um, it. Yeah, the, if it's the one, um, it's not the, the white shirt one, yeah, is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, oh no, the, the um, boob boob thing. Yeah, the boob shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's just Octobox on the side. Yeah. And yeah, we can do a tutorial on that. Yeah, for sure. Why not? There is plenty of tutorials on Inspire on that, but we'll do a YouTube we'll do on that. For you guys. So what I'm going to do is quickly, someone asked about silhouettes. So I'm going to bring, and this is just, I want you to not, you don't, don't copy the light, copy the thought of what I'm doing. Uh, that's most likely going to be, most likely enough, cool. And what I mean by that is you'd use two lights. Now, most people, when they're doing silhouette shots, they're going, you hate this? No, you don't have to. We're only going to do the very last one. We're just going to do your pregnancy shot. <laughs> so before, before, we, before we contacted Rara about modelling, I asked her to go out and get pregnant last night so we could do this shot, and she wouldn't. She was really party pooper, so sorry. We're just going to use her nose as her belly. If and you guys are new to our channel, we're really inappropriate, and you will just have to. Kind if of you can't to handle it. our inappropriateness, it's leave most a bad likely, comment. <laughs> no, <laughs> like everyone else. <laughs> most likely leave because we can't help it. We're we are who we are. Yeah. Um, Rara, can you come up to me? I'll flick That's it, it. To face that way. Cool. I'm just going to get. So this is. Take about a step that way. About there. Cool. Beautiful. And I need to get that light in a little bit more. So, this is actually one of my training setups to train about contrasting light. And this was just the quickest way I can show you how to get a really, really nice silhouette. Cool. And hopefully, it's not too overcooked. It's a little bit overcooked. So, there's a, yeah, let's turn off that, we'll turn that, in fact, let's turn the lighting down a little bit, and let's bring the lighting backwards a little bit, and in a little bit, because I need it to be more silhouette. You'll notice I'm not pointing the light at the model. The light is pointing directly behind her. Cool, that's really pretty. Oh, no, hang on. I wasn't on anything. Oh, battery's dead. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Which Sorry, battery? guys. Kiki battery's dead. That's all right. We'll say unless you can fix that up now. All right. I will flick it to us. So now we're on this one. No, just leave, leave oh. it on there for a minute. I'll flick for a second. You fix her battery. Okay. I'll do this. So what... She's all tangled. So while we're on... Cool, we're on this. You'll see that we've got... I still want to turn this down a fraction more, but you see this really fine line that we've got on here. I didn't mean to click that. Get off there. I'm going to just turn that power down a fraction more. Um, do I flick to auto? Uh, what are you trying to do, sorry? Just get another camera. Do you want it on you? Or the wide or anything. Oh, the wide, yeah. I'm just going to do a change on the lighting at all. There so you I'm go. turning the power down a lot. And I'm just going to take another picture. You know, it looked dead straight. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. Just bring your hair from covering your eye. Can you get that horrible fringe off your eye? <laughs> yeah, tuck it behind your ear. Perfect. Perfect. That's really pretty. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So I don't know what screen 
I'm coming to fix we're it. On. Sorry, I was just trying to get a fresh battery. And now we're going to go back to that. <laughs> all right, do I need to balance this again for her? No, not at all. Cool, so what you'll see is this beautiful fine silhouette. Um, I would just fine tune this a little bit more and what I can do to fine tune it, I don't know, what do I need to press spec? What are you trying to do? <laughs> just, I need to show stuff on, yeah. I just don't want it on my screen. I there want you it go. On something other That's than on the wide screen. now. It's on the wide? Yeah. So the one thing I would do a little bit, if I move this way and move this way, it will change how sharp a line. So if I've got that shot, I should just have a really fine line down her nose and it turn you a little bit further away. Just that tiny bit, the tiniest little bit. It's only the tiniest little bit to get that beautiful, there we go. So there's that beautiful silhouette running down her lips and that's by running a light back behind her and if I wanted to do both sides of her, I'd run another small beauty dish or small reflector this way and that would put then a beautiful sharp edge onto her from that way. And that's beauty dishes done. Okay. And that's Rara done. Deuces. Deuces. And now this is Kiki's back on. Oh, there we Kiki's go. back on. There we go. We sorted it, guys. We sorted it? Yes. Cool. That was stressful. Oh. Stressful. Gosh, that was real stressful. Calm it. So what's our next lighting? You're the lighting expert. I'm not an expert. Well. Um, all right, so I know what the next lighting is. Somebody wanted a heavy <laughs> contrast light. <laughs> Social distancing. Social distancing. Elbow. <laughs> Can you put some BO on before you do that? Some BO? Oh. Don't yeah, you want to get rid of, you don't want to get rid of BO, not put it on? Did I hurt you? No, you didn't hurt me. You always <laughs> hurt me. You look after. Um, Cool. I think somebody asked about a contrast light, didn't they? Get up to your speed, Beck. You're starting to stop driving over my cables. Well, I'm... You're going to break them. I'm not driving over them. Yes, you are. I don't... I didn't, I didn't remember asking anything about contrast. Yeah, someone asked about contrasting light. But that's cool. If they didn't, I won't do it. I don't think they did. I think that's just your autopilot mode because you normally talk about contrasting and beauty dishes at the same time. All right. So everyone heard what I said. What I'm going to do is going to find this comment and the next time we do a live street, she's going to apologise to me live. Okay. Right. Okay, I'll try and keep up with the 266 people watching and all of their comments coming through. Sorry, that was Sassy Beck coming out. She happens See to... See what I have to put up with? This oh is what happens when everybody, I haven't... Everybody has a go at me, but look how she treats me. Uh, have, have we answered this a little bit earlier, um, but maybe you hadn't tuned in yet. Any luck with getting Peter's look in Capture One? No, we have not had any luck. We have tried four or five times now, and every time it completely failed. So we. I can get close to my look in ACR. Catch ya. I'll, I'll catch you. Fix you. All right. Thanks, heaps. Yeah, it's not like. Look, I when I shot McCannon, I uh, Capture One was the program I always used for everything. But since I've been shooting Hasselblad, my look has changed, and I think. Um, if you saw any of my retouching tutorials, even though if they're in colour, there's something I do where I bring in a gradient map and a black and white layer. That's more the style of my <laughs> finished photos and it ha has this haloing effect, which I can't find a way of making it happen in Capture One. And Beck and I tried really hard in one country, I can't remember, what, in uh, Milan last year. And Beck looked at the computer screen and said, yuck, what are so you gross. doing? She hated it. So, so yeah, we're, look, we're going to find a way, but to, right to this point, uh, we can't get that look. Capture One is very, it's great for doing still life. It's great for doing architecture, um, for doing stuff like uh, landscapes and things like that. But as soon as you want to get away from doing perfect and you want it to be a little bit not perfect, I can't get Capture One to do that. It's all too digital. And I want to try and make it a little bit analog. So with, when I'm talking about sound, you know, analog, we run it through tape, we run all these things to do it. With both ACR and uh, Focus, I found a way to break it to get me that analog-y feel. I haven't found a way in Capture One as yet. 
Now, one somebody from Capture One said they'd love to spend some time with me, but nobody's contacted me. I'm happy to sit down with their programmers and show them what I want and see if they can come up with a way because it, it's a way of getting more a film type finish in your picture than a digital picture. People are really funny and I like that we, sorry, social distancing. No, it's all right. Um, I like that people are actually starting to jump onto our sense of humour. Someone asked if we could do a tutorial with gels and someone then said, I don't think I've ever seen him shoot with gels. And then someone else said, yeah, he always uses those orange gels, <laughs> which are our heaters. And someone made a comment and then we... So you just wasted all that time for that. That's Thank you. funny. No, it was funny. In fact, Kiki, what was the last shoot you assisted on? Yeah. Did I use yeah. gels? There you, are. there you go. So we actually do use gels, but yeah. So only we commercially. Only commercially. Peter, well, Peter uses black and white. So. Yeah, there's, um, there's an amazing guy who uses gels. He's from England. I'll think of his name in a minute. <laughs> oh, this is killing me. Um, we'll put it in description later. But yeah, he's, he's got tutorials on using gels and uh, the business that he's with has a podcast and they interviewed me and it was always this black and white and gel argument we had on the interview, but anyway, um, next. No, Peter hasn't tried the Fuji film. He hasn't had a chance to play with it, so he doesn't have an opinion on it. So I don't, I don't, for me to go to a Fuji place and get someone to lend me one for a day to play with is going to take three or four hours of my life. Mm. I just don't have that time. If someone wants to drop one in for me to have a play, I'll give my honest opinion. Um, but yeah. Uh, everything I'm reading and seeing and hearing from people, I love it. So I'm the only thing is I do like, I don't like crop sensors. So I'd be looking at the medium format one, not the crop sensor one. Why are you drinking out of something that looks like a tuna tin? Um, I like tuna. <laughs> um, no, this is my old fishing cup. So when I was used to shoot for fishing magazines, this cup came with me everywhere as my coffee oh. cup in the morning, as it's my... Schmentimental. But Schmentimental, but the other thing is, you can't knock it over. So that's why I have it. Get one of my cats in here, I'm sure they could. Yeah, anyway. anyway. So you need to, yeah, get serious. Okay, sorry. I'll grab you in. Uh, you know, someone did actually ask why you were drinking out of something that looked like a tuna tin. You should write down what you're missing in Capture One and send it to the development team. They did that, and in the new version, they added the stuff. Um, number one, I'm dyslexic, so nobody would be able to read my writing. Uh, number two, time in the day to actually do that for me. I really, I've got a million other people wanting me to do things that are fairly important. Uh, and number three, my experience is, and Beck knows this firsthand, we were doing a workshop somewhere and one of the people at the workshop was very high up in Adobe. Mm. And I mentioned a couple of things I really disliked about Adobe. And this person who was very high up in Adobe said, I'm getting the guys to talk to you because I agree, this is really bad. We've got to fix this. And he then, I told him what would happen. He said, no, 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 we we're always looking to make things better. He then attached me to an email that he had sent to his developers basically saying, who's he? He's just a photographer. Why would we listen to him? So, unfortunately, I think, unless, and look, I'm happy, happy, happy to help any camera manufacturer or any software manufacturer make things better for us photographers. I don't care who they're with, but a lot of them, the photographer is the last person they're going to listen to because their IT people know exactly what they're doing and we don't know what we're doing because we're just photographers and that's my bit. She'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the English photographer you were thinking of is Jake. Oh, Hicks. Jake Hicks. Yeah. yeah. Jake Hicks, if you want to see gel work. Oh, everyone's already yeah. Yeah. written. Yeah. Jake, Jake does a really good job and except his black and white work's terrible. <laughs> come, to, <laughs> come to Peter for the black and white and go to Jake for the colour gel. <laughs> oh, savage. He sucks as a black and white photographer. I heard he's black and white blind. <laughs> Someone accused me of being colour blind, that's why I shoot black and white. So he's, oh. Um, Oh, did you just get someone, that? Someone mentioned the comment about contrasting. Someone said dramatic lighting. 
Dramatic lighting, there you go. I don't know dramatic and contrast are the same. I'm not a photographer, I'm not a model. Well, dramatic and contrasty. Not an assistant, allegedly. Not an assistant. I've lost, oh, there, no. There it is. Not anything, really. I couldn't find this one. Let's drink wine. So and what I'm going to do, this is a little bit of fun, and that's because we've got an amazing figure model. Um, what would you call yourself? Would you say your art nude, or would oh, you say... Oh, this is Dominique, by the uh, way. Yeah. yeah. Hello. <laughs> What, like if you had to only give yourself one label, what do you want the world to call you? Uh, come alone. <laughs> come alone model. Come alone model. Yeah. Chameleon. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I will recommend her. We'll put a link in to, for her uh, pages and that. I've shot twice interest. with you now in the last couple of days. And yeah, um, we got some awesome shots. Yeah, so you think. Oh, yeah. So yeah, we had a we had a really cool shoot. We have got um, we only did one tutorial, didn't we? we oh we did the two, two but two. we but that was for Inspire. We didn't yeah. do what yeah, the reason being is because YouTube is a little bit more public and we ha we didn't have many clothes on so it wasn't really YouTube appropriate, even though they say you can put it up at a, yeah. What they say and what you can do are two different things. But yeah. But it was it was partly covered with the with the strange pink. <laughs> but yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, they've got to. See. Well, they'll be able to see, see the pictures in a, within the month on your so on your Patreon site. So they'll be able to see that strange object I made yeah. you use. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do a fashiony type of light, and I'm also going to do a contrast and some shadow. So I'm going to put a modelling light on now only because I want... Hmm. Sorry, I'm just modelling proportion. Someone is saying hi from the Czech Republic, which is... Oh, well, we've got two We've people. got two, yeah. We have two... We've got a Czech model and a Czech camera operator. Oh, so oh. There we go. <laughs> All right, so I've put the modelling light on. It's more so you're... It's easier for me to show you what I'm doing. That's I'm what so someone just said. Someone was like, why don't you use a modelling light when you're preparing sets? Uh, two reasons. Oh, yeah, two main reasons. Number one, see how yellow that light is. If I'm shooting fashion, we're very blue. So we're thinking blue. If I'm shooting fashion, I'm thinking blue. We're not thinking warm and autumny colours. So it's tending to, whenever I look at the subject, give me a different feel to the type of feel I want. So I'd rather not have something that's making me feel a certain way, which is opposite to the picture I want. The other reason is because what you see out of here is not what the light's going to give you. And I can show you a demonstration with this especially, is I slide this, see how that light changes? Well, on most lights, where the flashlight is and where the modelling light is are in two different places. So what you think you're seeing isn't what the flash is going to show you exactly. I, and the other thing is my accountant said to me a couple of years ago, what's this bill for modelling lights? And I said, oh, they're the lights that go in the things. I said, you know you spent $3,000 on modelling lights in one year? So I started not turning them on anymore. So I don't really need them. And that's $3,000 a year I save. Well, we work seven days a week. We're, you know, it doesn't take long for us to... What are you looking at? Oh, you're cooking a little bit. You're cooking? She's oh, no, no, it's okay, because it's, it's fine over there. It's, it's fine over there. It's Beck's fine over there. Beck's sticking her head in. All right, so while I don't want to be on a long lens for this, in fact, I want to be on a wider lens, I'm going to go to my 80 mil. And I'm, which is going to be round about a 65 yeah, on a normal course. DSLR. And I'm going to try and tell two stories in one photo. And what I mean by this is, and I can't go back any further, I want to have 
a story from the front and then a separate story from the shadow. So I might get you to go back a little bit. Back there, cool. And I'm just going to see if I can get your shadow in shot. No. We need you to come this way more. I'm just going to keep going, keep going until I can get maybe, I need to go wider, sorry. I'm just going to go to a 50 because I can't get what I want. Any questions while I'm looking for a lens? How are you com compense exposure at the same scheme but with different skin colour of model? Um, I normally look at exposure with the, so far the models today fairly close. If I was going to shoot someone, say African American or Indian or someone a lot darker, I would put a white t-shirt on them, take a picture, set my exposure to till the t-shirt was just overexposing. Because most people shoot dark people too bright and loses a beautiful coffee caramel colour of dark skin and turn it grey and sickly. So if I, the, my quickest way would be get Beck to walk in, expose for Beck, and then get somebody else to the, get a darker skin person. That's how it should. Someone did ask that before if you'd ever meted off me. And yeah, I'd meet all off my hand. Kay. That's better. All right, so I've set up the shot. I think this is going to be too dark. Um, I'm going to set this up in black and white right from the start because, oh, it's already in black and white. Let's pull <laughs> some of those. I'll just pull all my contrasting settings off it so I can get my exposure right. Let's pump the power of that light up a little bit. And I'm just going to very quickly just snap and look and turn up and snap and look. It's no different to a light meter. I am turning up. Instead of going here with a light meter and clicking, I'm going here and going click then I'm looking at a finished picture rather than looking at numbers and I'm waiting for my highlight alert to go off on her face and I'm going to keep lighting till I get a little bit of blue on her face and it is quicker for me but it's also showing me my directions of light and everything. Oops. So oh. I know how to use a light meter. I I have three of the old school light meters, the fully analog. Right, we just went over, so I need to drop it back two thirds. Yep. Do one more click, do a check, bang. It's still just going over, so yeah, I'll drop it down another thirds. And I think I'm happy with that. Then we're going to tell a story. Cool, that's really pretty. All right, make sure I'm happy. Yep, 100% happy with that. There's our shot. Now what I want to do is tell a story. But one thing I've noticed, see, see how her shadow is lower than her? So that means this light's too high. I'm just going to drop this light down and lift that shadow on. She know, what sort of woman do I like? I'm sorry. What sort of woman do I like? Strong. Strong, powerful. So I want, I want strength. In my photos, I want women to look strong. I don't want them to look submissive. Maybe it needs to still go up a little bit higher. So the, as I drop the light down, it's making her shadow higher. And I just want to make sure that that shadow is giving me... Hmm. Whoops, there we go. Sorry? Oh, I just Sometimes the button doesn't work when I push it. Um, and that's called your nails. No, I'm pushing it with the base of my thumb, not with the talons. The, the so base. So that's cool. That's giving me the height I want. Now, what I want to do is tell two different stories. So right now, the shadow's pretty boring. She's looking fine, but the shadow's looking boring. So what I'm going to do is look at there, create a shape to give me a better shadow. So you're going to be towards me, but get that shape towards me that's it, that el all right, elbows back. See that hole, all right? Turn your chest a little bit to me so you can get your shape, see that? Bring your arm back more, maybe. That's it, look at that. Now posing to me like that, gorgeous. Now we're gonna get a beautiful 
Oh, Millie just looks like she's got a very big bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, dull. That didn't work. Good one, Peter. <laughs> this is one way to get a model never to work with you again. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Yeah, um, I just need to right, that's cool. Down. That's really cool. Just, I'm going to watch your shadow. That's really cool. I like that shadow. Beautiful. Cool. Now I've lost your shape again. So just that arm, this arm on this side needs to disappear. Or even there, that's cool. Cool. Just give me... That's How nice. often do you clean your sensor, Peter? Uh, normally the day after I find a dust spot and I have to retouch 400 images. <laughs> <laughs> I keep my eye on it. Why, if I got a dust spot now? No, someone just asked. I have got a dust, oh no, it might be this computer, let me double check. I'm going to check if I do have a dust spot, because I can see a little, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so someone's seen it had a dust spot. <laughs> so <laughs> how often do I clean my sensor? Whenever someone tells me <laughs> you have a dust spot. So I'm going to quickly come in and clean <laughs> that up. little thing off. Hey, how much easier than, is this than a freaking DSLR? Um, how many backgrounds do we have? Like your walls? Walls? Yeah. I think we've got eight walls and... They're all double-sided? They're all double-sided. So, so that 16. goes at 16 looks. And then we've got some ends on them. So we've most likely got about 24 different looks. Joyuses. Joyuses. Yeah. Um, we're actually going to do... That's what we're going to do one day while everybody in the world's locked down. Beck and I are going to paint a wall. Yeah, we'll paint... Like That'll be We fun. won't paint the white cycle paint something. No, we're going to paint a, we'll make one, we'll make a distress wall. I'll finger paint with my nails. Uh, no. Cool. So one thing I'm now going to do, I'm happy with this. Let's make this even cooler. You'll need to talk back while I'm looking for something. Pardon? You'll need to talk while oh, I'm looking yeah, for something. Oh, yeah, probably should. Sorry, I was reading. Be very boring. <gasps> oh no, my camera died. I'll try and entertain you guys. I don't know how to entertain you guys. Um, someone wants to know, Peter. Can you? I don't want to yell. I don't want to scream in people's ears. Peter, can you hear me? No, he can't hear me. That's fine. He never listens to uh, me. Anyways. Sorry. Nothing. <laughs> Any advice? on how to manage model for full act shoots for the first time, how to prepare the model for a long session to learn and practice light mm -hmm. and prepare them to be patient. There you go, you got that to play with. <laughs> um, there's a whole tutorial on its own. Uh, you shouldn't be doing a full big long shoot with a brand new model anyway. Yeah, that's You really always. need to like we'll do a test shoot with someone before, a, if like yep. if a client's got a shoot, they're not sure if the model's going to be suitable, she'll come in first, we'll do a one hour session with her, mm -hmm. get her thinking the way we want her to think and feeling the way we need her to feel and then get her back on the important day when she's comfortable working with me. Well, I was going to add in with that, we shot with Paloma the other day and that was, that's for a YouTube tutorial coming up. Oh yeah, the, the makeup one, yeah. Yeah, so we, but we first worked with her for a workshop and then she was really good on the workshops. So we got her in for a test shoot and then the test shoot went really well. So now we're starting to do lighting tutorials with her, but it's better to ease a model into it that way rather than just be like, go the whole hog. Well, so even with, with Dominic, us, we, yeah. we shot, what did we shoot for about three hours the first day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but you were so much more comfortable the second day. Uh, with me, with me, you knew how I worked. Yeah. So the, fir the first day, she, we still got great images, but the second day, she didn't have to think, like, yeah. Peter's an idiot, I know he's an idiot, so <laughs> I can just do whatever I like. So, yeah, it, it does take time to get a model to really get, for you to get your look out of. There's very few models I can do it on a first shoot. I normally, it's the second, third or fourth shoot where I really get my look out of them. I want you to throw, right? So it's not for you to wear, it's for you to create beautiful shadows, right? So you, you, you look now when you throw it up behind you, watch, see the shapes? So I want you to get, get some nice shapes behind you. And while you're doing a nice shape behind you, I want you to pull an amazing face at the front. I want you to look really cool at the same time. And can you count from, can you do the alphabet backwards in check? 
<laughs> All right, so off you go. Whenever I'm ready. There we go. We just put angel wings on her. Oh, Nelly. Oh, yeah, that's nearly like angel wings on this silhouette. So you'll see... They can't see your finger. Oh, they can't see it? Why didn't go. you click no, it over? No, they can. They just couldn't see your finger, but now oh, they can see the mouse. They see, the see angel the mouse. wings. So that's the type of stuff I like doing with dramatic light is to cast, cast really nice shadows. Cool. Off you go. Give me a shape. Cool. Keep moving. Just go crazy. Cool. Cool. That's really nice. Cool. Cool. So sometimes I'll just look at the shadow and then other times I'll look at the model. So I'll just do a mixture between looking at shadows and looking at models to create the picture I want. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. Just flick between a few of them. Yeah, you can flick between a few of them. There we go. Do we have a pile of questions or do we have a light? We have some questions. I just need to, I was just trying to show you them this way too. I'll start changing for another light and, and you can ask questions. Uh, someone wants to, you guys don't measure the Kelvin and go from there? So the Kelvin? Yeah. Um, not when we're shooting what like a light. What is the Kelvin? You, it's, a, in, it's a filter Kelvin, on Instagram. Kelvin's um, Robert's brother. It's a filter on Instagram and I've always wondered what <laughs> it means. <laughs> Kelvin is the colour temperature of the light. Ah, that's so right. So you've got the Kelvin daylight Kelvin really 65 and 55. Really orange, it will be around in the 30s. Yeah, it's a really orange Instagram yeah. filter. I never use it, it always looks gross. All right. So, commercially, no, I'll use a colour card. So unless I'm using mixed light, and I'm wondering if that's what I've got on my computer. No. If I'm using mixed light, I might set up a scene calibration. And I'm going to double check I don't have a scene calibration set on this, because I have used it before. Um, oh no, it's not ticked anyway, so that's not. I'm nearly certain it's uh, our HMIs that are putting that tinge on the background. Probably. Yeah. Blame Do you, you always set your camera white balance to daylight in the studio? I set it to daylight for filming. Yeah, pretty much because in our RAW, we can then override it. Yeah. Whereas Easy. if you set it onto auto and you move from a different coloured background, there's a chance your camera is going to change it, which means you can't just go. It makes it harder to get everything to look the same. So with my, our Sony's we just set to daylight, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and my Hasselblad doesn't have an auto, so I set it to daylight. And then on commercial jobs, especially in the studio, I'll colour card them like you saw. I get a, got a colour card out before one of these things and do that. And you saw what we did the other day by putting a cold colour card on you. We got this beautiful glow off your skin. So yeah, I... Use a lot of this stuff. Technically, I've got to be spot on with my commercial work. With my private work, I just do whatever I feel like to get the image I want. And some of that, even if we flick this over to this one, if you just look at this picture and I come in now and play around with my colour balance, you'll see how I can now change the whole mood of this picture using my colour balance and I can do my fine toning in here. Then if I take the black, uh, the black and white off, look at, the colour balance is completely different. Oh wow, looks like but you're older. <laughs> it gave me, now if I changed from green channel through to blue channel, you watch how much lighter the wall goes. Oh, the jeans for a start. If I go to a red channel, so I come off onto a red channel, see Whoa. that, but then now if I move my colour balance around, I can then tone to my red channel. So when I'm working in black and white, I play a lot to get the exact look I want. Mm. Cool? Interesting. People are giving us love saying that this is awesome. Oh, I should pick it off that. Has anyone fallen asleep yet? That's why we did it. So yeah, someone has. Someone in America said that it was 4 a.m. there and they had to go to bed to watch it later. <laughs> <laughs> but people in Europe are saying thank you and you guys are so welcome. We wanted to give you guys something awesome to watch while you were all in quarantine. We wanted to be in Europe in another month. I know, we were supposed time. to be in Europe yeah. in May and now we can't be there. We were so we just wanted so to give you guys forward. something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to be home. You just want to get home. <laughs> so we. <laughs> uh, we don't know. We don't know how this is going to go on, but we just no. we just wanted to give you guys something awesome to take your mind Something away you. from the C word. Exactly. Um, have you ever thought, Peter, of moving the monitor closer to you because the, someone's getting fatigued watching you go back and forth? 
See how fat I am now? Imagine if I had it closer. <laughs> I'd be this big. <laughs> um, no, I actually, I, commercially on a shoot, I will do this back and forward a lot when I'm setting up. But once I'm set up, I will be at my camera shooting for 15, 20 minutes straight. You see me run around a lot because I'm not, this isn't a commercial shoot. This is trying to teach you. So I'm very much all over the place. On a commercial shoot, I'll be back and forward like crazy. Once my lighting's set up, I then bang, just bang, bang. bang in, getting that one spot. I most likely shoot for five minutes at a time before I got up, have a look. And I want room. I want to have that ability to quickly move stuff around. If my desk is too close or my camera things are too close, I'm forever having to move things. So no way. I'd rather get rid of this. <laughs> and that was an awesome segue. Someone asked if we're going to put up the photos from this stream on your website. Most likely not, and it's a thing that we kind of struggle with when we do actual workshops. Models always want photos from the workshops, but the thing is, it's not Peter's work. real work because how he, like, the purpose of this is for him to teach you lighting. lighting. And it's not when he's actually shooting, and you could even say that this is so different to how oh, yeah. Peter yeah. speaks to you. Yeah. So, yeah. he a lot of how Peter gets his look is by talking to the models, and it's different. So it's not his look, and it's not his work, and that's why he won't publish it. That it's was not my. It's not so much won't publish. Oh. It's just a, it's really not no, quite do, a finished you do, picture. Yeah, you every do. now and then, I'm like, yeah, every now and then, yeah. I love. That was my two cents. Um, but a lot of the time, that I'm so fussy about the exact expression she has in her eye. I don't care. I've set up my lighting just like I've shown you. But then I'll spend the next hour trying to get that one expression. And someone's called, said I spray and pray, and you can never do that in film days. Well, sorry, I used to shoot in film. So did. Peter Lindbergh, but if you watch the latest behind the scenes of Peter Lindbergh, he's on motor drive because we're still taking the original shot, but we hold our finger down and take another three or four just in case there's a better one. We're not spray and paying. We're still deciding to take that image, but if the model moves well, bang, bang. And so often when I've shot with the Sony on motor drive now, I'm finding the frame after the first frame is actually the frame I like the best. Someone wanted to know, I'm, I'm getting more popular than now. I'm not more popular than you are. But someone and wanted to know. My shaving mark is smaller than your pimple. Oh, leave me alone. <laughs> someone wanted to know how I became Peter's assistant. I have a full vlog on that whole story on my channel. Oh, you're just trying to drag people to your channel. <laughs> Here we go. I haven't posted it in ages, but there is a full video on there. How tall am I? I am 5 foot 11 and how do I get into modeling? I will eventually maybe one day do a vlog on that. <laughs> I said I would like a month ago and I still haven't done it. Yeah. Don't judge me. Stop judging me. She I never got in the model. That's I why she's not a model. Oh, no. so <laughs> All right, Anyways. so are we doing a change of lighting or have you got questions? Or yeah, what? change the lighting. Change the lighting? Yeah. Do you want to do the ground? Does that mean I can have a cigarette? Oh, you want a cigarette? Can I have one while you change lighting? Why are you whispering? Everyone can still hear you. <laughs> You can have a very, very quick I'll be happy cigarette. You better cigarette. suck it down. Oh, you've already pre rolled it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guy. so while she's getting a cigarette, and I'm going to set up a lighting. Sitting. Yeah. Are you happy with what you're wearing sitting? Sure. Do you want to put something different on? You don't know? Okay, with it. You're okay with what you got? Mm. I was just I wondering. Take off shoes. I was just wondering if we just give you a sheet. Have you got a strapless bra? No, uh, I didn't pre warn you, did I? Yeah, <laughs> that's not really. No, that's all right. We'll just, we might, we'll just, do, we'll do some. Uh, so just slant them again? If, if you want, we'll just throw, instead of, you know, how we did the one on the bed, we'll just do it on the ground with yep. one light on you. Yeah, okay. Cool. cool. So the model's going to get changed and just a big white sheet and you'll have. So I want to sort of hide you behind the sheet yeah. anyway. Cool. Uh, throw a robe on as well while you're out, when you come back. So I'm just going to pre-set up. I've got a box out the back. So we've got all our walls and then we've got boxes of backdrops. So I'm just going to bring out this. In fact, let's, let's do this properly. 
You're going to see me quickly build a whole set in one quick session. So I'm going to get a mattress, a sheet, a couple of pillows. I'm going to set up a really nice soft bounce light. And I should be able to do this in the time the model gets changed. Um, so I'm going to use bounce light. The moment we've got two HMIs bouncing off a white wall to light this area, I'm going to use that same white wall. We're going to bounce a couple of Sorry if that went really loud. I'm going to use a couple of white, a uh, couple of flashlights onto there to get enough power off there. I'm going to throw a couple of sheets on this. One of the things that is really important, especially if you want to be successful commercially, is to be able to be quick because time is money and I charge a lot. So I've got to make it so I can still charge the price I charge but still stay in business because I can do in one day what a lot of photographers take two or three days. Even though my rate is more than twice what some of the other photographers that'll do it in two or three days is they're paying my rate for one day. They're now only paying a model for one day. Hair and makeup stylist for one day. That's saved them a fortune. So I'm going to grab two of... Just going to run these two D2s. And I'm going to put reflectors on them because that increases the power of the light so I can punch a lot more light out of them. I might just change this one to another power one. Oh, the model beat me. <laughs> I was trying to beat the model, but she beat me. Um, Beck beat me. She had a cigarette before I finished. Sorry? I don't have your mic on. Or were you outside on Tinder, were you? I wasn't on Tinder. Oh, TikTok. Cool. So I'm going to drop two lights onto this wall. Even though we've got these on here, they're not giving us anywhere near the power oh, to light the model. Heaps. It's blowing out heaps because Peter's in the I'll blow out. I will blow out here because I'm standing in front of the light. So don't worry about that. No, don't turn it down. I'm not going to stand there for long. Just leave it where you were. All right, back guys. And Beck, Beck will find some questions to ask me while I I'm will. setting up. Sorry guys, I... She just... Dirty has to have a cigarette if she dirty doesn't have a cigarette. Smoker. Her heart and lungs stop. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, power cord. Yeah, fine. Where I was up to with questions. Beck is a sommelier and part-time model. Yes, that is very correct. What's that? I can't hear you. Someone said that I'm a sommelier and a part-time model. Which yeah, yes, she's very smelly. I can't. Don't know why I've worked with her so long. Oh, Somalia. I thought you said Somalia a lot. <laughs> um, um. Good night to the people in America. I know it's late. We will do a live stream targeted for America soon. Um, this one we've targeted at Europe because we were meant to be doing Europe workshops, which we've had to postpone because of the crisis. So this one we're targeting at Europe people. It's morning in Europe at the moment, but we will do one for America. Um, and making a workshop in Istanbul. We, we. That's not the first time I've ever heard of a request for their Istanbul. Yeah. 
Yeah, but how it's one of those things we can see where our following base yeah. is. We check all the analytics and stuff, and so we check where our following's coming from on Inspire and YouTube, and we also pay attention to people asking us to come to countries. So we wait for enough demand, and that's when we decide we're going to go somewhere. Unfortunately, our workshops aren't cheap. It's not like Beck and I make millions of dollars. It's just very expensive for us to travel. travel. Because yeah. to try and cart six cases of red wine with us everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, Beck won't come. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's just, it is expensive for us to run the workshops uh, in other countries. Um, Studios, models, all of those things yep. add up very quickly. Travel, hotels, even Ubers and that. It doesn't take long to clock up $1,000 in Ubers. Yeah. Um, Especially when Beck forgets things back at the hotel and has to catch an <laughs> Uber back to get it. Um, and the, the other side of things is that this is part of the reason why we uh, developed Inspire is for the countries that we do have some loyal followers in, um, but not enough people to make it worthwhile going and doing a workshop that they can still watch um, the same sort of information, that, or in fact, actually better information because we can be everywhere with Inspire, whereas we're normally just at one or two locations when we're doing a workshop. Let's dial them in at about No nine. lockdown. Well, our country has kind of gone into lockdown, but me and Peter practice self-isolation about 30 to 40% of the time. It is just me and him, and we are not infected. And we use a we very, use very strong um, mouthwash. It's called alcohol. It's called alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good luck any disease getting past what we drink. That's it. Oh, do you need a top up, by the way? Hmm? How's yours going? Yeah. Uh, it's like... I'll get you a top up. Melt. No, no, it's fine. Okay. Do you want to watch that you don't trip over coming back? So I need to get in here. It's just <laughs> I want to get in here and you won't be able to go back. All right, so if we can get our stunning model. Um, there's a sheet on top, <gasps> which I've... In fact, I'm just going to move that back a little up. bit. I'm sorry. What that? No, your tag, your tag. Yeah. Sorry, my nails, my scratching nails. In fact, she can come back in wearing that. I'm going to set my computer back to a picture that has no settings on it, so it's still flat to do my setup. Now, with the white sheets, I've got to be really careful. It's really uh, easy to overexpose on the white sheets. Um, I don't want to be super wide, so I'm going to go, I think, I'll get right with a hundred. We'll just keep you more in sitting up or sitting positions, no lying positions, yeah. because I'm going to shoot it quite narrow. Yeah. And right. again, just so you, you realise that these HMIs aren't, all it's doing is putting a horrible purple in the background. That's a picture of what I'm getting without the flash. So that's without flash going off. So you'll see that the HMIs are really doing nothing to that. Let's get a focus. Cool, that's really pretty. And I'm just going to build up my exposure. Mm, Paul, I'm going to have to really work on this. Why I'm saying this is because I've got those lights turned up really bright. I might need to bring this wall in closer to get that kick to come off more. I normally would start have a wall closer for that. This wall was only put in for our... Did I kill anything? No. Nope. Looking fine. And Sorry, Kiki's just drinking some water. a lot water. of my power's going too high. So let's drop those lights Working down lower. So all I've done is I feel that my lights are too high up the wall and I'm not getting enough kick off the wall, down at the level the model's at. Let's just bunch in and see what that happens. Uh, we're a little bit off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put them to full, and then I might have to just do it with a little bit of aperture 
That's getting closer. That's looking really nice. Sorry? It's looking really nice. It's looking really nice. Yeah. Oh, thanks for your confidence. <laughs> I'm Oops. Compliment. Oh, I'm on F yeah, I was on I was on F9. I don't know when I went to F9. I must have bumped it before. That's getting much nicer. Let's see how much room I've got on my exposure. So I'm half a stop. No, in fact, less than that. I'm a third of a stop from going off. So that's actually getting very close to where I want to be. I don't want to be much higher, so I don't want the white sheets to go off. Uh, I might still come down just one third. So I'm at 7.1. Uh, let's drop the 6.3. Yeah, see, that's one third of a stop. I've gone off. So, yeah, let's stop that. Let's go back to 7.1. So, 7.1 is giving me a nice look. I'm going to just take a picture. Again, I only like adjusting a picture on a really nice picture because if the picture looks a bit ordinary, when you're playing with it, no matter what you do, the picture looks ordinary. So if I get a picture that has a really nice expression, just think about your two dogs. There we go. She's really homesick to her animals. Cool, that's really pretty. That's, yeah, but see her cheeks has come up. Just by mentioning her animals, you'll see there's a really nice softness in her face. Uh, and that now will give me a picture to work with. It's really pretty. What I might try, I'll try what I did the other day. I'm going to just grab the x right and I'm going to use one of the cool areas to put some warmth into her skin. Now, this is anti-fashion. We wouldn't do this in the fashion world because we would go cold colours. We wouldn't go warm. But if this was shooting for her folio, she wants something a little bit nice and warm, don't you? She absolutely adores warm tones. So I'm just going to zoom in on here, grab my eyedropper tool, and I'm just looking at her skin when I click on these. So I've got that one there, or that one there. I like that one better. No, I like that one. So now that I've set a warm tone color balance to her, we can come in. That's really pretty. That's really pretty. Cool, 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 cool. The freeze. Remember? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she was starting to get into. Now, this isn't a bad thing. It's still zoomed in. Yeah, I'm going to unzoom. Sorry, I don't know how to do that. That's right. Yeah, this is uh, when I talk about re-educating, or oh, that horrible word, breaking the model, which is not breaking. It's actually just getting the model to work for the way I work. So it's taking out what every other photographer wants them to do and then get them into the head the way I work. And because she works with a lot of photographers that really don't know what to say to you, right? They're just scared to even talk. So she just moves and holds this so they can get their focus and get everything else right, yeah. take their 10 minutes to take the picture. And once they take the picture, she'll move again. With me, I don't want that. I want her to continually move. So it just takes a minute for them to get used to it. And I normally say, just pretend it's video. Cool, 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 cool. That's really pretty. Eyes, better eyes. Beautiful for women, fashion, remember? I want powerful fashion. Uh, I want along the lines of Angelina Jolie. I want that beautiful stats, but it's just all about your eyes. Cool, cool. That's really pretty. That's really pretty. Stunning, stunning. That's really pretty. Just for all the people who enjoy hearing my voice, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. We are going to do a cool t-shirt one day. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, the cool is a word I use because... It has no connotations to it. Has, yeah, no, it's not like I'm going, yum. Or that's hot. Or that's hot. That's, well, how, that's hot, that's sexy. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, horrible, right? Horrible. Yeah, see, the model is telling you, do not use those words. Even if I just say gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful, gorgeous, that, that's... You do say beautiful sometimes. I say beautiful... But beautiful's a nice, nice word. word. Yeah. And I use gorgeous a little bit, but... Beautiful's nice, but when you say things like sexy, oh, that's so I'll sexy. get on all fours. It's just creepy. <laughs> like. I'm now going to shoot across 
just to show you that I have still got a really nice light shooting Save across it. Switch. It's just cooking now. It's weird how it's cooking there, it shouldn't. Anyway, it is really nice. It is really nice, but that just shows you the different lights we've got there. But I, that dark light just meant I shot too quick. One of the flashes didn't go off in time. I was shooting too quick. But I found that words like cool, uh, they just let you know that what you're doing is I like, doesn't it? Whereas if I say gorgeous, gorgeous, <laughs> it's different, isn't it? Someone I'll wants to know if we're going to have Stefania on any time soon on camera again. We were actually meant to have Stefania tonight, but, but she's moving house. She's moving house, so it's a little bit stressful, a little bit chaotic for her, so she couldn't be here, unfortunately. That's really pretty. Uh, that's really pretty. Cool. That's really pretty. Cool. Cool. So now these are for you. These are for your Instagram. So it's. I'm not going to tell her how to pose. I've told her how she's going to use it. So now she can, cool. What I might do is I might show you a sort of a trick I can do. So at the moment, this is 100% lingerie in bed. Someone said boudoir with the question mark. Or boudoir. Yeah, it is. It's boudoir. It's not fashion. If I want it fashion, I need much stronger faces. And I would get rid of that horrible warm tone and make it cold. <laughs> and make it more... No, that's cool. What I want to do, now we're going to make you implied nude behind a sheet. Okay. So I want you to bring the sheet around the front. Mm -hmm. So I want, no, yeah, but we'll get the sheet around there first. I want your legs still coming out each side of the sheet. Yeah. And if by taking that strap off and having her front on, mm -hmm. very instantly, watch how instant we have just made her look naked. Just the fact you can't see clothing is enough to make this naked. Cool. Cool. So if you want to have a beautiful shot where it looks like the model's naked, I'm going to get a much better shot by the model just taking her straps down. And she could even be wearing a bikini or she could even be wearing shorts behind this shot. It's still going to come up a beautiful shot. Our live streaming has just changed to video output low. Low? Is it that just there? It mightn't be, or is it here? It says that YouTube's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Let me check the bottom of the chat to see if... My quality is in 1080. Yours is in 1080? Um, let me just check the bottom of the chat. If you guys could please quickly let us know if you are getting any kind of weird buffering. If someone can please comment and give you guys a few seconds. Oh, Kiki's shining on me. I've got mine on 1080 and it looks like it's coming through fine. Okay. Okay? No, nope, everyone's saying fine. Sorry, guys, yeah. I just panicked. We never want to give you guys bad quality stuff. Well, so we try not to. Yeah, we try. We try our very hardest. Everyone's saying it's looking great. Okay, cool. cool. Um, Carry on as you were. <laughs> all right, so we've got questions. We've got yep. half an hour to go. Do you reckon we just Q&A it? Mm. Or they want me to try and get one more shoot in? What do you guys want? Do you guys want you to want ask your questions or do you guys want to see Peter try and set up another lighting? I'm just getting another refreshment. Cool, everyone's saying it's fine. Oh, someone said sometimes it does look 480. Sorry about that. Um, I don't know if it's because we've got a bunch of people watching us. Um, I'm really sorry, I haven't updated the link in the description yet. I'm trying to do a lot of things at once, but I will update it really soon for you. You all? People are saying more shooting. More shooting? Let me get some wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, all right, so do they want me to change it up? All right, let's... Let's, let's change it up. Okay, so what we'll do, we've got... Half an hour to go, we'll change it up Fif quickly. 15 minutes. 15 we'll minutes of changing minutes, up, and then we've got 15 and then minutes we'll of questions. we'll chat for the last 15 minutes. Cool. How's that? Sounds perfect. Yeah, people are saying that, like, 10 minutes of question and answers in the last part. Cool. So, so I'm, gonna to, no. I'm, just, I'm just letting people know I'm going to scroll up to where I was at with questions, keep sending them through, and the last 10 minutes we will just answer them. So what I'm doing, I'm going to just... I've dialed back... I've turned off one light, I've turned the other light with a, just a coarse reflector 
straight on her and it didn't flash because I'm on a different channel. Uh, C2. Channel 2. Channel C. Perfect. Oh, this is going to work. Right, so this is just a reflector. I'm going to shoot this black and white once I get my light right. It's not far off. I just don't like the edge of the reflector. You'll see that there's that curve That's what Peter just in shot. the side. I'm just going to kill that curve a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to watch my shutter off there. So I want to come in closer so I can't see that shadow. So all I'm doing is each time I look at the screen, looking at fixing the problem that I've caused. Oh, that's really pretty. That's stunning. This is definitely more uh, like a my style black and white. That sheet is going off. I'm just going to see how much it's going off by. There's nothing down here. You'll see that there's no channel hitting 255. So I'm safe. With that bit of going off, that is fine. I'm now going to drop into my grayscale. Uh, I'm going to jump into my green channel. Ah, uh, that's looking really cool. I just I want to get rid of that, but I'll do that in a minute. Um, let's throw a halo on her. Halo. Um, oh my god. <laughs> 4K. <laughs> <That's pretty> <laughs> 4K. Um, a little bit of shadow fill because jet's not really doing that much or is it slow? It's doing a little bit. That's actually getting more where I want to be. Um, so it's just me on the fly. I'm blotching her legs a little bit. It's looking pretty cool. I want that ring. So that ring's coming in from that. If I move my camera up here, hopefully I'll get rid of that ring. It's really pretty. Cool. 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 Just have one more quick look. Yeah, I'm liking that. It's again, it's to my taste. Turn off the blue. That's giving me a really nice feeling. That's really nice. Really nice. I like so it. that's just using, oh, I forgot what they call this. It's called a Meg something. What's it called? Mag, uh, Magnum. So this is a Magnum reflector. I've seen photographers. Oh, oh you broke it. You broke it. <laughs> you broke oh, you it. did broke it. <laughs> Beck, she's a really bad assistant. She didn't tighten that up properly. This is what happens when you drink something. You're banned from drinking, Peter. See, I haven't broken anything. I fixed it. <laughs> it. Kind of. I'm so happy that happened from what? It didn't explode when I fired it. Lol. Anybody who wants to lend me their lights. <laughs> You're breaking. Mm. Sorry, I'm not over there to change it over to the photo. <laughs> You're glad so that happened. Guys, that was, Thank you, that was the last photo. You're more relaxed about it. Guess who's never borrowing my lights now? <laughs> Sorry, it didn't fall far. I'm just fine tuning now. This is just me getting fussy. So I can't tell you exactly why or what I'm doing. I just fine tune it. Fine tuning because I didn't like. There's just, there's something that's still jumping out at me. Her very dark legs was caused by this. So I'm gonna pull that way back. Let's do this without something you can't use. So let's just bring that in. and bring a bit of contrast in, that's nice. Yeah, I'm gonna walk across to show that light. You can walk oh, across and show what, how it's I broke not, it. It's not over there at the moment. What's not over there? Oh, the camera. There we go, now we can see it. Yeah, so I'm just very subtly fine-tuning. Um, let's flip it the other way. 
I'm just seeing if what happens if I get a little bit more height. So rather than come in low, just will be a little bit higher on the light. Because again, I am trying to get a nice, the feel I'm trying to get with this is more like a fashion magazine feel. So I'm after something that's gonna give a little bit more shadows under. Did I turn that off? I did, I turned it off. I wanna get a little bit more shadows underneath her chin. It's a little bit dark that we're getting there. Yeah, this is just me fine tuning. Right, I need to lift that a touch higher. I believe you broke it. It's so a little funny. bit oval. <laughs> I'll fix it tomorrow. Um, someone, I'm just going to chime in. Do you colour calibrate your computer monitors? Which ones do, do I you what, sorry? Colour calibrate your monitors. Uh, you can't calibrate apples. But what do you use? Uh, when I'm editing, I'm using ISOs and I, they're the ones that self calibrate every day or so. Um, so yeah, a lot of people don't realise that, yeah, you can try and calibrate apples and there's some Dells are the same, but really doesn't calibrate properly. So on my editing machines, they're calibrated. I think auto calibrate calibrates every two days. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. They're, uh, they're very expensive screens, so they're just, they're too expensive. But unfortunately, um, when I'm working commercially, as much as things don't, get, that's really pretty. As much as things don't get, that's really pretty, that's lovely, um, printed as much these days where that's where the calibration really counts because compu everybody's computer is a different colour um, because 90% of the world, oh, sorry, 99% of the world don't calibrate their monitors so they're never going to be right anyway. But the one thing I normally say is if you can have it looking good on an Apple, at least you know half the world's covered for with iPads, iPhones, Apple computers. Um, I found over the years though with the Apple monitors, the calibration doesn't really slip much in colour. It's only it loses contrast as the screens get older. That don't the slip doesn't happen much. I've just changed my lens because I want to make this more like a beautiful portrait shot. So by putting a longer lens on, I have now taking it, so, so it's not her sitting on a bed anymore, it's her wearing a sheet. And I'll do a couple of minutes of shooting this, cause that's really pretty. Eyes, that's beautiful, really pretty. You're going home soon. That's better. <laughs> Are they cancelled? <gasps> no. Oh no. I'll talk to you afterwards. <laughs> cool, cool. So this is the distance, cool. if anyone wants to know of how far Peter is. That's from really the cool. Model. That's really pretty. That's really pretty. Cool. If I want to do a motive work, I'd rather come back a little bit because it gives the model some depth to move. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Eyes, stunning, 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 stunning. Beautiful, beautiful. I think everyone's seen enough of this beautiful, stunning model. <laughs> Which she is. <laughs> Which she is. It's been hard. We, we've had two really good shoots and all I've said to her is, move to Australia, I want to shoot you more. <laughs> but unfortunately she's just told us now she's kind now of stuck she's here. Told she's been quarantined. Careful what you wish for, Peter. Except, yeah, she doesn't know that they're going to send her to Central Australia and make no, her sit no, on no. his rock or something. Surely not. <laughs> Cool, so what we might do yeah, is I'm we might... I'm just going to change, this is a bit too bright, we're cooking a bit, and they're going to flick it to You're going to flick it to that, or we're just going to be us, so just can Kiki turn off? Yeah, Kiki can turn off and take a break. Can if say you... bye? Oh, yeah, we can say bye to yeah. Dominique. <laughs> and again, we will put her links for her Instagram Graham. and her Patreon below. I'll put Kiki's links as well And below, Kiki's so links, so yeah. Kiki, guys can check out Kiki's, Kiki does Kiki's a lot of pole photography, which is really cool. I don't know if they have a fleet on. Oh, yeah, I was trying to self-isolate. <laughs> That's fine there. Am I good? 
You're all good. You can, you, you can power down. You can power down. All right, so question times. Question times. I've got a lot to catch up on. I'll try and be That's quick. Right. Sorry if I don't bounce off Peter. But uh, do you ever run into David Osler out there? David Osler. I don't know who he is. I'm not a snob, but that's Max. Yeah. Um, I'm not a snob, but I really, I'm so busy. I really, especially these days, I really rarely look at other photography work. It's, seriously, I'm not a snob, but uh, when I was trying to get my photos better because I hated my photos, um, I kept looking at the photographers I loved and by doing that, it kept training my eye that my photography wasn't good enough. Mm. But once I got my look where I would look at Peter Lindbergh and say, that's a Peter Lindbergh, I love it to bits, but I'm not a Peter Lindbergh, this is a mine and I'm loving what I'm doing. So once I got to there, I actually started stopping looking at okay. other photographers because now and then you get, I don't know, you, you might, without realizing it, start to steal part of their style so then you get people on Instagram making live streams accusing you of coffee. Oh, but you did coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being sass. Sorry, I Question can't help time. it. This isn't I'm Beck sorry. Sass I know, time. I'm sorry. Mm. Um, alcohol actually breaks down the outer wall around a virus. That's excellent to know. Cool. No, I haven't accidentally scratched Peter with my talons. Although sometimes on my chin. I, I feel like it though. No, she normally pokes me in the eye. <laughs> If Beck is Peter's muse, who is Beck's muse? Why is it looking like Lindbergh goes? I'm not Peter's muse. Natasha is Peter's muse. No, Natasha. Natasha, has, we've only just started working together. You, uh, you can have more than one muse. You actually, you do know you're one of my muses. Well, that's really nice. Thank you. I lie a lot. Oh. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, Beck. Beck was um, Beck was a muse when you first started. You were you're pretty much the only person I was shooting that I would call a true. Fashion model, and lanky and skinny lanky, and skinny, and she had this awkwardness with her posing and this dumbness do. with her face. <laughs> Still but do. that's fashion. It's, a, it's this. She had all this. Uh, she was just very young, and unfortunately, she stopped. But when she's come back, was sort of she's kept her lanky awkwardness, and still kept her dumb face. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry. Sunset. Oh, I don't know, uh, 16 bits you were shooting at? Um, I think Hasselblad's really only 12, uh, 14 bit. I think most cameras are only 12 or 14 bit. But yeah, when I come out of my uh, RAW program, it'll come out as a 16 bit, which it'll, it'll be <laughs> manipulated that there will, it'll be a 16 bit file that comes out as a TIFF out of my RAW. Um, and was all that light reflected or bounced? No. no um, the See if I move reflected this. and bounce is the same, isn't it? I guess, but yeah, that was. I know it's overexposed. I'm really sorry, but yeah, everything. No, was not everything. The oh. first shot that I was doing in color. But no, I think they meant the last one because they said that. Yeah, the last one. No, it was no. direct. Oh, okay. Yeah, I turned the light round straight onto it out of a reflector. So <laughs> that was using the Magnum reflector, which is a. It's got like a, a hammered, beaten, gloss surface inside that really kicks the light out of. There's a, one of my photographers I really like, uh, Show Studios, Nick Knight. He used it a lot. There's an awesome shoot he did with Kate Moss. And he had a voice activated light stand and that's what they used. And it was the first time I saw it used on skin and I had to try it and I absolutely have loved it ever since. Uh, why did you use a cold colour card for fashion? Why would you use a cold colour card for fashion and not for a shoot like this? No, sorry, cold colour. So. When you saw me do my colour correction, that was I picked a cold colour which made my, when it adjusted, made everything warm. In fashion, if you look at a lot of Vogue magazines and things like that, there are a lot of them are the opposite, especially I'm talking high-end, haute couture fashion. A lot of them are colder colours. They tend to be in that bluey greens more, whereas if you look at more of the sports and Sports Illustrated and some of the softer porn men magazines, they tend to have that warmer yellow, uh, warmer orangey yellow colouring. So fashion sort of keeps its way to the blues and 
the boudoir and that side tends to go more to the yellows and oranges. But you can do anything you like. It's just me personally, if I, and I really still hooked up to this. Yeah. So if I just go back to the colour pictures, right, and if I was to make this more what I'd call fashion, I would tend to be making this definitely cooler. So you'll see, see that more cooler tone in there and my colour balance would be sitting more in that area for fashion. Yeah. I, like, I do like that a bit more. Just me personally, but hashtag not a photographer. Someone wanted you to talk about your camera settings. My camera settings are pretty simple. In the studio, using flash, they're always the same, uh, except I had to play a bit because I couldn't get enough light off that bounce. It's normally F8, F9. I used to be F9 a lot, but then I saw some refraction problems with the new 50 uh, megapixel sensor, so I dropped back to F8 and couldn't see any sign of it. Um, I, on the Hasselblad, I, because it's a uh, leaf shutter, I can shoot right up to two thousandths of a second with most of my lenses, but I tend to shoot a hundred and sixtieth of a second in case I grab another camera that is not a leaf shutter. Um, so, and 100 ISO and that's the consistency of my work with flash. So I don't even have to think, all I do is turn lights up and down, I'm not changing my camera settings. Temperature we keep in the studio, this is, was a warehouse that Peter converted into his photographic studio. There is absolutely no airflow in here and given the size of it we can't run air conditioning or heating like well. $80,000 to put a yeah. system in here and they said it cost us 30000 a year to run it. So being in Melbourne, it goes from, like literally it will drop 20 degrees in about an hour. So it will be boiling hot, we will be like sweating and then 20 minutes later we're freezing cold. We make do with portable fans on wheels and heaters also on wheels. That's just the only way we can really survive, I guess. You guys going, Kiki is leaving, our just beautiful camera operator. Yeah. No? I was going to talk to it. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Sorry, unless, I'll you, try unless you can answer the next question, I'll yeah. just disconnect I'll, this. I'll, I'll, just I'll answer questions I can answer while Peter has a little chit chat. Quickly chat. Um, yeah, so it really varies in here, but we always make sure we always ask models if they are cold, if they are hot, if, you know, obviously. <laughs> me again I'm just turning yeah yeah okay I'll just really sorry off. about you can't that turn off. we can't turn off our mic Peter tried to turn his mic off and I'm really sorry for that I think we just lost a bunch of people as well that's fine <laughs> sorry guys um what else can I answer sorry that Peter's mic was sometimes out of range uh we we do try and perfect these live streams as much as we can, but it is a little bit tricky, a little bit trying, but we are getting better at it. And given the state of the world at the moment, we'll be doing more of these. So our quality is just going to grow up and up and up. One of my jobs is to make sure these are better for you guys. Uh, da -da. Shooting and wine, always shooting and wine. Yes, my nails are extremely long. My nail tech even has a thing saying extreme length and it's a picture of mine. How do I type with them? I can function like a normal human <laughs> everyday being with them. It has taken a few months of practice, but I'm totally fine with them. Uh, everyone is so welcome for us doing this. We're going to be doing a lot more of this because we know that everyone is in a really crappy situation, even we're in a really crappy situation at the moment, we've literally lost the next four months of work for us. So it's really stressful. Everyone else is really stressful. We just want to keep everyone positive, happy, for creatives to keep creating and for us to help in any which way that we can. And that's why we're doing this. So stay tuned. Keep, like, keep giving us feedback. Keep letting us know what you want to see and we will keep doing this over the next few months. Um, else can I answer? Old 
old recordings. I mean, yeah, I can definitely put old recordings um, on Inspire for you guys so that you can watch it. Uh, it's something that I haven't thought of, but it is a pretty cool suggestion. We do, what we normally like to do with YouTube and Inspire is we'll do the really in-depth version for Inspire and then we'll do like a, a not so much like, Oh, I guess, I don't know, like, we'll still give you guys, like, a, a YouTube version of it, but most of our, like, we still have Inspire, strictly Inspire content, but some of our shoots, we do do a, a YouTube and Inspire one, but if you guys want to see some of the YouTube content on Inspire, we can obviously put it on there for you as well. Well, we have, we just did the last couple, so... That's, yeah, that's what I just said. Out. That's we what I just said. We yeah. do the, like, the YouTube version and the Inspire version, but there are some ones that are strictly Inspire. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that's what. Because that's what Inspire is. Inspire about, yeah. is the more in-depth tutorials, start to finish, including a retouch. That's what we do for Sorry. that. But that's right. Uh, but someone just asked if we can put some of our older content on, like on the YouTube. shoot with Tiziano. No, on Inspire, and I was like, well, we can. I mean, it's on YouTube, but if you guys want it on Inspire, you can do that. The quality of that was really low because that, I think, by memory, that was filmed on an iPhone. Oh right. So some of that older stuff was, um, it was live streamed. So back in those days, you could only live stream off an iPhone to Facebook. And it's just, it is really low quality, but we want to try and do more of that type of shoot mm. with the cameras we're using now. Uh, someone, I, I zoomed past it because I You zoomed past. What size booty dish do you recommend is 50 centimetres and up? Um, you keep talking, I'll go get a tape mm. measure and tell you my favourite size. Okay. I'll find another question that I can answer then. Peter does use gels for occasionally for commercial work if his clients want it. We did a shoot for an activewear company maybe two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago and they wanted it shot with flash in the city with gels. That was the look they were after, so he did do it. But for his own work, if you're here, I'm guessing you're a, a follower of Peter's and you know his work's <laughs> black and white, so a gel's really not gonna help. 50 centimetre, yeah, perfect. That's my preferred size. That's by, I've got a 40 centimetre, which I really like, which is a shallow dish one. Mm -hmm. um, never get silver ones. They're not a beauty dish anymore. Nice They've lost style. that feel. Um, but yeah, the 50 centimetre, the bronze colour and the pro photo ones with a bit of a deeper dish are really, really nice. Someone just asked about gels, but I answered it for you that yeah. you did it on, you do it for commercial use, but I'm not your a work's black and white, so it doesn't Really not a fan different. of gels, it's just not my, I, I love there's it. very few pictures I have in any of my mood boards or anything that have got gel lighting, it's just not, it's never really well, interests me. It's not you, but I really like it, I think. Yeah, I no, cool. that's. That's fine, that's my taste and your taste. And that's yeah. what makes us different. If we were all the same, we would be boring. Oh, sorry. Well, no, I'm just saying we I'm would. Sorry. Um, people are saying the quality dropped, but now the stream help has gone back to good. So, sorry yeah, it dropped. Yeah, we can't handle. That's our internet bandwidth. And We've got good internet here now. And that's, that's oh, the yeah, virus. no, but it's because, that's every, because everyone's, everyone's at home and given <laughs> it's. It's nearly nine o'clock in everyone's Australia, so movies. everyone's sitting at home watching Netflix and I'm sorry that that went down, but it's good now. I hope it's all fine. Um, uh, yeah, people are asking if we have restrictions in Australia. We do, but it is about 30 to 40% of the time it is just me and Peter and neither of us are infected and we don't... I'm, we, we practice self-isolation day-to-day lives. So. We're not really. No, I mean, like, we don't really go out and do No, things. yeah, pretty much. Uh, we, um, I go home to my wife. Beck goes to crazy dwarfs and spreads saliva with 600 other thousand people. <laughs> I, I go home to my boyfriend and my cats. Peter goes home to his wife and his dogs. And then we, so we've yeah. been fine. And the models that we work with, obviously, they... They know that they're, everyone knows their restrictions. Everyone knows if they're at risk. Everything's, everything's fine. We will continue to do this stuff for you guys. Um, What's with the baby and skippy voices? I just, it just happens. It's just a Beckism. 
You're going to find a question? I'm trying to. People, people are talking to each other. That's really cute. I love that you guys talk to each other during this. Sorry, I'm just Yeah, they're reading. hanging shit on us. No, they're like, <laughs> they're helping each other out. It's really nice. Oh, Sorry, good. I should move this over so that I can, I don't disappear when I'm reading questions. Do I need to read questions over here? No, it's fine. I've got them here. Um, people were saying about the exposure on the legs. Um, they didn't like it when they were dark. Yeah, that wasn't the actual, that was, um, again, if I move my clarity slider, anything next to white's going to go dark and anything next to dark's going to go light. So with her, with the white sheets, the clarity slider did that really horrible thing to it. And I would not normally use the clarity slider next to white sheets anyway. Normally I just mm. look to them in the face though. How do you think the Apple Pro Display XDR stacks against the ISO? Uh... Good, but gee, they're expensive, aren't they? <laughs> Didn't you? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Peter tried to build like the most expensive Apple computer he could and it got to like over $100,000. No, it got to $98,000 <laughs> for the computer and two of those screens. <laughs> and what, yeah, it was fun to do, especially to look at my wife's face when I said, this is my next computer <laughs> system. And she just goes, all right. <laughs> That's like me and my boyfriend when it's like, I'm going to get my lips or nails done. Done. Yeah. Uh, are the BenQ monitors any good? Because um, ISO are a little bit expensive. They're, no, they're not great, but if you can get a colour balance working on them. But we've all got to work to our budgets, seriously. So if that's all you can afford, make them work. And what I'd say is do a retouch and maybe put it somewhere so you can view it back on a phone or view it on somebody else's computer and just go, oh, that looks really green, I have oh. a problem. Which means if it looks really green on another computer that doesn't look green with everything else, you know you're gonna be the opposite to green is what your bias in your computer uh, monitor is gonna be. Seriously, it, it's all right for people like m myself who have built up my tools based on what my clients need. And yes, it's very, very expensive. But I started off like the rest of you. I really did. I start off with really, really crappy. Out of the back of a car. Yeah, out of the back of a car with a really crappy monitor back in the days when I was still on PC. Um, I can't believe I could even edit on that monitor I had. It was just so bad. Um, I think that's why I went black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, apparently, you shouldn't be drinking Corona. But this is awesome because Corona is mine and Peter's favourite beer. And it's Why shouldn't like we be <laughs> drinking Corona? Oh, it's controversial, maybe. I don't know. No, because Corona... Warren, Warren, it's Warren. It's Warren. Warren gets our sense of humour. So his shit's I don't get his sense of humour. His shit's <laughs> No. If he wants me to drink Melbourne Bitter, no. <laughs> <laughs> we can't buy um, Modelo in Australia, otherwise I'd drink that. Modelo, I sorry. I think it's pronounced I call Modelo. it Modelo. I think it's pronounced Not Modelo. a Modelo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, lo a wish location you would like to shoot at? Kate Moss's house. <laughs> because hopefully Kate, Kate Moss would be there. Um, Russia? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to go to Russia just to get to some of that. The only problem is, as I look at these places and think they're amazing, I think if I was shooting there, I'd really want to shoot without a model because it, the background and the scenery would take away from the model. So I'd always be, you know, what am I shooting? Um, the model or am I shooting this incredible location? As soon as I put the two together, they're killing each other. So I'd like to shoot... I'd love to shoot Russia with amazing Russian models, but then I'd have that problem. I'd end up doing shallow depth of field or something stupid to make the model pop out. So, so um, if, if I was going to be a it. landscape photographer or as like that type of thing, yeah, somewhere where that, there's that Russian, that beautiful, destroyed old cities. Um, but we're really lucky. We get to, like, shooting in the streets of Paris, shooting in Gothic Town in Spain, shooting New York in Times Square, shooting LA on Hollywood Boulevard. We get to shooting... What are you doing? I have the hiccups. I'm trying oh, to hold hiccups. my breath. Oh, my God. Um, we are very lucky, and anybody who's not from Australia, we have some of the most amazing scenery. And where I live, I don't have to travel far to have this incredible bush or forest that I can work in. So I'm pretty happy with what we get to do. Yeah. yeah do you agree? Like, yeah. We and get to go to some amazing we do. locations. We really do. I totally agree. 
What inspired you for the setup you just did? Uh, we yesterday was it yesterday or the day before? When we shot Dominic, yeah. Uh, yeah, yesterday was it? Yeah, today's yeah. Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Go yesterday on. we shoot. <laughs> yesterday we did a shoot with Dominic for her folio because when you look at her her Instagram, you see she's got a lot of amazing shots, but they're so different to the type of photography I do. Mm. So after we shot last week together, we both. I liked her for my folio and she wanted stuff for her folio. So we actually did a, uh, what you'd call TFP or a test shoot together. So it was, uh, we both worked for each other. And she showed me a picture of Gemma Ward uh, on a sheet which looked like natural light. And I actually built the set in here, yep. but we used natural light for the first part of the shoot. Then we used bounce light off the psych out I of the psych. I filmed all of it, so. Oh, that's right. So we it's going to come up on Instagram. What is your channel coming up for it? Too. Sorry, YouTubes, we didn't because she was Naked. not wearing clothes. <laughs> um, it's just too hard with YouTube. Even though they allow it, it does affect the viewability of your whole site. So um, for we, we'll let everyone know when it's up. And what's, what are we? It's worth thirty dollars for a month. So you get to see an amazing shoot for thirty dollars, but it won't be up for about another two weeks. Excellent segue. If the oh. model uses your shots on Patreon, do you charge, or is it? Um, no, this is a this was a the deal I do with the models. So um, this is a really long story. So things, a lot of the work we do. Oh, here, strap yourself in for a Peter Long story. No, it's just <laughs> the model got paid. For, both models got paid for tonight. <laughs> I'm staring. Right? Yeah, I know. But both models, so if we're going to do something commercially that's going to benefit us, but only slightly benefit them, so both Rara and Domi, they'll both get some traffic. Maybe Domi will get a few Patreon people go in. So, but it, they need a little bit of money as well for that. When we're doing something for Inspire, we pay our models yeah, as commercial do. models. Uh, if we're doing some, if I'm doing something with a model and she wants some stuff for a site that she's going to make money out of, um, depending on our agreement, it'll either be a commercial shoot where she pays me or it'll be a swapsy shoot. So she might say, all right, let's do this, but you can film it for Inspire at the same time. So I won't pay her for that and she won't pay me for the yeah. images I edit that she can put on to her Patreon it's site. It's like a fair trade off. When, we, when I'm doing my personal work, I have a pre-set up arrangement with every single model because a lot of my personal work is only for one photo. Mm. It's literally when we're doing my, well, my real stuff, the whole setup is to take get one photo for exhibition. Yeah. And with my exhibition stuff, my prints will only ever be one of six or one of ten. It'll be nothing else. Mm. And the model has the choice of picking which number of edition she can have. And if she picks number one of ten or number one of six, it'll be the first one that's sold and she will get all the money for that picture. That is her payment. Yeah. So we, we do a, a arrangement with all our models. Um, I really don't like it when photographers um, say they're gonna pay a model, but don't. <laughs> that, I got me bite in. Anyway, next question. <laughs> Seriously, guys, if, you so, if you've got an agreement to pay a model, pay the friggin' model. Stop being tight asses. Do you, we have extra long t-shirts for work? Um, we We've got don't. double XL. They're, they're oh, like I think it, no, it means long. Oh, shit, sleeves. Long. Send us an email, we can arrange it for I you. Think they do, I, no, I think they do long sleeves. They, they do yeah. do them, so but we, we don't, don't have, have them up for sale on, on them. them. So yeah. just send me an email and, and I can, can talk to the t-shirt printer that we work with and I can organise it for you and let you know what price. So send me an email. The baby voice. Why tiff? Mainly, so I'm a commercial photographer. I'm working with commercial companies. There's a lot of companies, believe it or not, who do not use Photoshop or any Adobe product. If I give them a PSD, they cannot view the thumbnail on some machine so that don't have Adobe on there. So that's why I work in TIFF. And the other thing, TIFF gives me four gig, up to four gig files, whereas PSDs, I think, only give me two gig. Oh my god, I've fallen so behind on questions. I didn't well, even hurry up. It just well, it just refreshed. And I didn't realize uh, this year we'll come to Holland. Holland is Netherlands. I, I think so. Don't I'm pretty ask sure me. It I is. live in Australia. 
So yes, we do have plans. All of our workshops are postponed, not cancelled. Uh, they are still available. You'll book. see them on our site now. So everything from Europe, you can see. You can you can still see, see you what can we're going to do. Book, but we don't have dates because we need to wait and see what's going to happen. So if you do still want to book, if you want to if you want to pre-book, just send us an email. Yeah, we'll hold you a spot. We'll hold you a spot if you want to book. Um, we just can't give you a date at the moment because we don't know where we can leave we, our country. Yes, we can't, and we can't get it. And we'll do America when we can do America again but we haven't even put yeah. dates up for that no. yet we'll no. we'll see what happens with the beer problem <laughs> did you custom build those mobile tripods uh no no we bought them um i normally leave a link down below i will put it down below if you guys want to they're see called that. camera stands yep. uh, if you just go go to b h type in camera stand you'll see them there's lots and lots of different companies that sell them they are expensive but when you're working in the studio you'll never knock one over they're so stable for you to work and I can just set it up and shoot all day without having to go refocus. Will we ever come to Poland? We would absolutely love to come to Poland. We actually do have a pretty big following there and the models maybe are next year. stunning. So maybe next year, price of the workshops will be based on what the current pricing is, which you can check out on our websites. Um, it's, I, I globalise it for, so America and Europe, which are the two countries we do every year, I make sure it's fair, I check the global exchange rates and I make sure it's always priced and that is based on Peter and I's travel costs, hotel costs, model costs, studio costs, everything. That's my job to work that out. Are you going to show how you have built your backgrounds on wheels? Yes, coming soon while we're in lockdown. Yeah, while we're in lockdown. <laughs> we're going to do lots of stuff <laughs> like that. We're doing lots of stuff while we're in lockdown. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 learning so much. Thank you. Hope all is well. Yes, we are well. Best wishes to you too. Audio got lost. Yes, we got it back. Um, I hope so. Do you, yeah, we did. Everyone's commenting again. Do you think it's possible? That was when you, you broke it. <laughs> I didn't peek. <laughs> Do you think it's possible to replicate your results without the massively expensive equipment you use? Of course. I shoot with Sony's. So Sony's aren't expensive cameras. In fact, if you go back in our YouTubes, you should be able to go back far enough, you'll see something. I shot the entire shoot on an RX100 Sony tethered to a computer. So yeah, it's not the gear. The gear is just to make us photographers feel good. Yeah. Right? It <laughs> doesn't make the picture better, it makes us photographers feel better. We're gear junkies. But yeah, look, you can't blame your cameras. I've seen Nick Knight's taken uh, at least one, if not two, Vogue covers on an iPhone, which are unbelievable. So, don't if you blame your gear, it means you're a bad photographer. You should be able to shoot with anything. Uh, someone has speed lights. Can he use them effectively during the day? What would be a good monoblock setup, and what power? Um, I'm not big on using speed lights, only because they're so small, and uh, they're not as expensive as, like, the, say, a Canon. Uh, speed light is not as expensive as a Godox light. So, and but look, get it. See if you can get some type of bigger diffuser on them. So just make the light size a bit bigger. But I still love that paparazzi look, which is that like I don't like saying it's not a Terry Richardson look. He stole it from the paparazzi. Mm. But that mount the flash really close on a side bracket to your lens, and that's how our Mets Mets flashes used to be mounted on our cameras when I was shooting bands back in the day before we had digital, that was back in film, yeah. and that gives that beautiful look. So it's a really cool look. Alan Von Unworth has become, like, her work's amazing. A lot of her looks is that style. So yeah, you can do it. I did a work, I did a thing live on stage at Photo Plus in New York using torches and bedside lamps, and people could not believe the lighting we were getting. Using saucepans to bounce it off, using shower curtains, using white cutting boards as reflectors, and they were saying, "I can't get that good a light in my studio." <laughs> so, so you, you've got, everyone's got an excuse why you can't. God, it's really yeah. easy to say why you can't. It's really Don't hard call to. Me I can't. You fork. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, next question. We've got to be getting close Someone to the end. We are, or I think so. I don't know. They've we'll I'm trying to hurry up. Don't how say much, hellos. How much makeup do you ask models to wear? Minimum. As yeah. little as possible. What I say, so I'm the one. So when we're organising a shoot, I send models an email, and I always specify, obviously, time, place, location, wardrobe. When I'm specifying makeup, I say, do your make for a test shoot. Do your makeup 
however you feel most comfortable. Peter does prefer natural, so if you can go as natural as possible, that's Tinted fine. moisturizer, a little bit of eyeliner, a bit of mascara, a bit of lippy, that's it. But I always add in whatever you are most comfortable, comfortable with. Comfortable with, yeah. Because if you tell a girl who is comfortable with a full face of makeup to come in natural, she's gonna be uncomfortable and Peter's gonna get a bad shot. So like me personally, if Peter said natural makeup, this is my natural. Foundation, eyebrows. Six foot thick. Foundation, <laughs> eyebrows, winged eyeliner, <laughs> mascara, and lipstick. That's my natural, but this is what I'm most comfortable in. So it, I just tell girls whatever, as natural as possible, but whatever you're comfortable with. Commercial Next, shoots, it'll be whatever. Oh the, yeah, commercial yeah, shoots, it's, it's whatever the client yeah. wants. Um, and unless, yeah, yeah. Uh, Beck, we want you in the next live. Unfortunately, I cannot model for lives because I need Someone to Someone has to push buttons. Camera operator, even though I'm sorry I cooked it at the start of this live, but I'll get better at we it. We can try and teach Kiki. Yeah, but she's got to operate the gimbal. All oh, right, no, we'll I try and teach Natasha. I just lost the part. No, it's fine. I'm busy doing this. Um, oh, my God, I just lost In fact, we, we are. I promise you, we're going to do a live. This is really going to put pressure on us both. Mm -hmm. I'm going to photograph and look after all this live stuff and Beck's going to model. We're going to do it at our home office and show you what we can do in just any old crusty house under pressure. How's that sound, Beck? Yeah, wow. I'm and I'm going to get, I've got a, I was <laughs> glad I didn't Great. say what I was going to say. I have a pet snake and I'm going to get her to model with oh, the snake. No, with Monty, I was going to say, I'll get out my snake. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> be, oh, <laughs> yeah no. <laughs> Have you thought about doing a tutorial to help models with posing? We want to run model workshops. We want to do a model workshop. We just don't know if models will actually come to it. Because or, pay. or pay for it. <laughs> they all think they're good. They're like, I'm too good at model. <laughs> but yeah, no, we definitely, we really want to do um, some model workshops. And we'll most likely try and do... Uh, on our, on Enspy, we've got quite a few things about teaching models, like teaching photographers how to look out for things with models. But we might try and do a modelling. We should try and do a model mm, YouTube, and maybe cool. we might attract models to watch it. And maybe they'll start stop doing the macarenas. Maybe. Um, I think I'm starting to get really tired. Words are even. I'm the one who's good at words, and I'm starting to feel like Peter. Words are. Well, just skip the whole highs. Only look at a question. I am um, in increasing clarity and focus seems to exaggerate less than ideal skin. Can this be corrected? Oh yeah, look, it's, you've got to treat it for every shot. I just uh, everything I did tonight was on the fly quickly. Um, if it breaks the skin, but on the focus, it doesn't do that much damage. In ACR, you can actually pull the texture slider down, but zoom in 100%, then bring the texture slider down, because if you bring it too far, it looks really plastic and fake. And on, I've tried a bit on Capture One, you have a natural and a texture and things like that. Play around with that. Mm -hmm. But Hasselblad has two different clarity sliders. One for landscape and skill life. It is disgusting on skin. Yeah. The other one I use is one that's disgusting on landscape and still life. So I have two different, there's two different sliders they have. What would you recommend as a first modifier for a studio beginner for portraits? Uh, it's an Octobox or an, a large umbrella with a sock on it. Peter, could you do a shoot with an entry level camera with a kit lens and speed light, such yes, as a easy. Canon 750D and... Well, I'll go less than that. Oh, like I said, if you go back, jump into my page, put it onto videos, go back to the really early ones, you'll see one we did with Rara. Just using a Sony it's on RX. Instagram. Oh, is that Instagram? It's on Instagram. It's on IGTV. Is it? I thought yep. we had it on YouTube. You I keep talking. I'm going to have a do. look. Uh, what is your retouching process? We have got a live There's retouch on the channel. If you just go back to our videos um, when we were in Barcelona last year, Peter did a live retouch. We're going to do a few more retouchings for YouTube. Sorry to be a plug, but there is like a heap of retouching videos on this. Right, 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 right. But there is like heaps of those on Inspire, but we do have one we're going to do more retouching. I really do talk a lot with my hands. I apologise. In fact, you're right. So, yeah, on our IGTV, there's one. But no, we'll, th we're going to do that as a definite. Within the next month, we'll do a shoot just using like an RX. So fixed, it's got a fixed lens on it. Like, so it's got a, we can't interchange the lens on it. I'll shoot it tethered and I will show you uh, just, we'll use a torch and a, and a bed lamp 
And I think I've got some, one of those crappy little flashlights that has quarter half, three quarter full. Cool. Why don't you like shallow depth of field? I love shallow depth of field. Post-apocalyptic All right, so cool. I, I'll answer that a bit further. Um, in studio, when I'm using flash and I've got a, a solid, a boring background, there's no benefit out of shallow depth of field except a quick fall off. Um, we have got a good tutorial coming up on YouTube soon where I'm showing me making a Hasselblad look like a large format, which is going to show you a 50 megapixel medium format. So rude. Oh, excuse me. A medium format camera shot at 1.4 on an Otis 100 lens. Um, when I'm outside, I love shooting my Sony 70 to 200 fully wide open at, at 2.8. And I have at least six or seven lenses of 1.4, and I shoot them fully wide open. And there's plenty of pictures on my Instagram. And if you just, yeah, that yeah. are shallow depth of field. What posing instruction would you give an amateur model who has never done a shoot? Uh, don't pose. Don't, don't pose. Feel. Just feel. Just move sit every there, single move. bone in your body and feel. Have a thought in your head and. Just have a thought in your head to hmm. think, just have a thought and, and get think camera, about it. Get camera out of your head. That's Don't not a think camera. it's a camera. Stop trying to pose. Stop trying to look sexy. Just have a thought and... Gaze, at, gaze out a window. Yeah. Think of Justin Bieber and singing move. to you like Beck. Beck or, look at Beck. She and loves move. Justin I Bieber. Love Justin Bieber. Move every single bone in your body and... Just find the, the words that associate. So if you look at Beck's face for a second, pugs. See, see the expression, wine, <laughs> mandragora. Oh, she's holding back on that one, Justin Bieber. Oh yeah, see there we go. So see you'll find you just got a word associate. Um, see words like chocolate do nothing. Okay. Chopped cheese. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Pizza, <laughs> hamburgers. <laughs> see, so you just got to find words that make to, that make their muscles in their face move in a nice way. I know that I, my face is just like totally horrible, Justin, but I always, always, I'm not a model. Ah, da, 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 Ten da, more da, minutes and right. then we're going to oh let people God. in America. I need to go to the toilet. Well, I can, all right, you go and I'll, uh, my dyslexia, I certainly can I ex No, I don't think you can. Oh, hang oh. On, I've lost where we are. It keeps jumping. Da, 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 da. Sing for you guys. Maybe that'll entertain you. Nobody wants to listen to you make noises. Registered my email for your Europe, Europe shots and didn't receive anything. Are they cancelled or postponed? Um, I'm really sorry if you didn't receive anything. That is extremely bizarre. But yes, they are postponed. It has all been updated. And um, yeah, I'm, I don't know why. What they do, register. They said they registered their email and nothing came up. Registered as what? For the mailing list. Oh, they didn't get sent one? Check your uh, maybe check your check spam, your spam sometimes because sometimes emails go yeah. to the spam for so some reason. Sometimes your spam filter might put anything from Mailchimp. You're out of the camera. Sometimes your your spam folder <laughs> might put stuff from Mailchimp into junk because I know that two or three people that I want their mail, I keep on having to pull out yeah. of junk for some reason. So it might be there also. Yes, unfortunately, it is postponed. Send us another email. And Send me Beckel a personal email, email yeah, to Beckel Rebecca at k-o-u-k-e-i dot com dot a-u and send me a personal email and I will triple check that you're on there and I'll let you know when we have new dates. Apart from model releases, what other paperwork do you need? We don't use model releases. We do for, com for commercial, for commercial work, work, that's up to the commercial client to do that. For our personal we work. We don't use it for workshops, we don't use it. We get so many people on workshops asking about it. Part of the terms and conditions for attending a workshop is that it is for portfolio use only, so we don't need a model release. Commercial work, the client will organise that for us, which is super handy. Hi, George from New York. I'm going to jump onto some easy questions. Oh, thank Glad you. to see you. Mark, what time is it over there? My God. Anyway, I don't know. Okay. hope you're not too severely affected. The, the news we're getting in Australia about New York is pretty horrible. Mm. Um, Alex is online. Most people are. How are you, Alex? It's, Alex has done some of our workshops around the world. I can't remember where. He's, He's done one on ones as well. He's done one on the ones, yeah. Hi, Alex. Alex did Dubai. Dubai and somewhere else, yeah. Nice yeah. work. I'm loving some of the pictures you're posting lately. Really, really cool. I'm loving them in our group. Um, oh, God. 
God, I'm losing. I lost where I was. My thing moved. We lost Peter as well. Oh, maybe we should wrap this up. I'm 70 miles from New York. Uh, so I'm going to I'll there. let Peter do this. I need to make like my last name. <laughs> In-house joke, nobody's going to get it. Can you turn, oh, can, no, don't turn off your mic. Just don't take the mic to the toilet with you. I'm certain people do not want to hear that. It's horrendous, trust me. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just reading through with, every tog needs a perfect muse. Yeah, I agree. It's, in fact, it's really, really important to have at least one muse or even better, a muse in each different style. Um, I had my very early days, Natasha. Um, Beck was also my fashion muse. I had a Nicole who was more pin-up model, but we didn't do pin-up, we did, I did some of my edgy work with Nicole. So it's, you know, people like Tanya, she's like a muse. They sort of drift a little bit. Natasha gave up modeling, she's starting to come back again. Beck gave up modeling, she's coming back. So sometimes your muses drop out and come back. But yeah, it's really important that you have someone that you're 100% comfortable with working with and shooting and to create stuff together. Uh, it just takes the pressure off you. You don't have to try and prove anything or you don't have to, you, you, the, the, your muse knows what they're gonna get and they're happy. And if you don't get anything on a day, they're still happy. They're happy just to come and hang with you and uh, enjoy the process. So muses are really, really important. Um, Seventy-five knock deluxe. Like a question. I had a fifty knock deluxe. Absolutely love that lens so much on my Sony. I sold it because I never used it, and it's not. It's just. It just wasn't a fifty mil. Is not a lens I use a lot of. Um, but you're saying about the seventy-five sounds pretty cool. So yeah, uh, but I absolutely loved my fifty mil knock. Are oh, you back? You can, can you read your questions? I don't know if we're getting close to the end or not. I don't know how bored people get. Will you ever come to Italy? We were there last year and I miss it. It's like my favourite place in the world because all I do is eat pizza and drink wine. We would love to come back. We're planning on coming back um, when we can. No, I'm the father of uh, Nikki Colson and Len Colson. Hmm? What has that uh, got to do with the price of eggs? Did you just answer, what do you think about the new Godox Monolight? Huh? No. What do you think about the new Godox Monolight? I really don't know. I haven't tried it. Mm. I Seriously, I'm so busy. It's not like uh, every now and then someone will send something for me to play, but we, we don't really do reviews on things. Yeah. And, yeah. We're Have you tried the Oni A7R 4 No. But I don't think I want it because I don't need 62 megapixels on a 35mm. I can't think of anything worse. I really want, I want Sony to give me an amazing 30 megapixel camera that has incredible low light, have really, really good uh, colour and good dynamic range. Megapixels, you, one of you out there, I want one of you to say that you actually need more than 35 megapixel camera for what you do. When was the last time you printed anything big? And if you're shooting stuff and you're zooming in to crop it, that's why you want it. It means you're a bad photographer because if you think about it, no painter paints a picture, then gets a pair of scissors out and crops out the bit he likes. Walk in closer and take the proper picture. I have just gotten to the end. I'm sorry if I did skip a few questions. I didn't mean to. My thing's going a bit berserk and so is my brain. But I'm going to ask my last question, which might be my favourite my favorite question from Molly. Why do you have a shirt with a young girl on it? She's not young. She's <laughs> this old wino. <laughs> 27 and that's me. <laughs> that's back at 27. No, the I'm 26. The, re the best thing I like about it... I was 26, that was last. See, if I do this, watch this. <laughs> that's how she's going to look when she gets older and fatter. See, I can distort her. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we should wrap this up. We've been going we should. for three I know, hours yeah. and 20 minutes an we hour. We could go so forever, but we're actually, it's late it's in late our time. It's late in Melbourne. Get, it's 9.30 and I want to get home to my cats and my boyfriend. I'm sure Peter wants to get home to his wife and dogs. And I want to get home to my sim. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, we're going to wrap it up, but we promise you, we're going to try and do something like this at least twice a week during this period because to me, the, the virus is one problem, but I think mental health is a much bigger problem and people being scared of what's happening and being locked into rooms and I both think we need to have fun, we need to relax down. Both, both Peter and I are on the same page in that we know we're safe, so the actual virus isn't our concern because we know that we're in a good position. We're so we're more so worried about the state of the world and everyone's brains. So we just oh yeah, we're more worried. I'm more worried about the mental health and yeah. the the people are going to lose their businesses, lose their livelihoods, maybe lose their houses, and maybe do the wrong thing because of that. Exactly. I, that's what I'm scared about. This the, this virus will come and go like every other one does, but the damage it's leaving Doing mentally, yeah. I think that's where I'm more concerned about. Totally. Especially, well, I already know four or five photographers have said that's it, I'm shutting down their studios. And that's just I don't want to see us, that happen. So we yeah. just want to keep everyone happy and keep putting out, like... And worst comes to worst, try and take an awesome photo. When, if you're self-isolated, find a way of taking awesome photos from where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Do whatever you can. Just yeah. keep have fun. happy and keep have happy. fun. And we'll be here to talk shit and shit stir and answer your questions but we hope you guys enjoyed tuning into this we will do another one soon i'm just trying to find that's how far we're supposed to be apart <laughs> we both, a we've both got it <laughs> <laughs> we're fine we don't do anything anyways sorry shit talking again thank you guys for tuning in we send you guys big loves stay safe stay healthy we'll see you guys soon and if you're watching this recorded just leave any comments or questions below. Um. <laughs>